tough against Penn State, coached by that wily old fox, Joe Paterno. Nevertheless, the Irish led 21-7 until Penn State finally found their form in the second half. Saka rolling deep. Got a man open, it's the tight end, and he is going to score. Touchdown, Penn State. Al Golden. And with the scores all square at 21 all, the Irish mounted one last attack as the clock continued to tick. You call it, Paul. <laughs> Third and nine. Myers standing in, fires it over. Oh, it's intercepted! Darren Perry with the interception, and Penn State has it at the Notre Dame 20 yard line. That interception set up this Penn State game-winning field goal. And it is good. And Penn State leads with four seconds remaining. Tonight, the Irish close up their regular season with another tough one against the Trojans of California. That's coming up next, live and exclusive, here on Screen Sport. Coliseum. Nick Halling with me, Wayne Hardman, for the final game in Notre Dame's regular season as we see former President Wayne Reagan looking to take his place. It's the Notre Dame Fighting Irish against the Trojans of the University of South Southern California. Wayne, you've had seven days, seven days to think about what went wrong last week. What went wrong? Basically, you got to put performance uh, on the field against the, uh, the defense that didn't come up with the goods, and it's up to them to perform today. Well, of course, they lost 24-21, and they lost their number one ranking as well. There we are, all the way down to number eight. A real shock there is Colorado that have moved up to number one. Colorado play Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl next year. Just a real next, uh, yeah, next year, it's uh, New Year's Day, and that's a repeat of the uh, New Year's Day game earlier this year. Miami now number two, and Brigham Young number three. Moving down the order, you see Penn State gone up seven more places. They're on their way to a bowl game as well and lower down look at Southern Cal there 18 so they've had a patchy sort of season with an 8-2-1 record and then moving further down the order Ohio State they've come into it all but dropped out of course and Southern Mississippi they've had a pretty good season as well Michigan State just in there as well now then this is the big rivalry in college football of course isn't it Wayne and uh, USC are always pumped up more than more, more, more than any other team, I think, when they play the Irish. Yes, they even practice every week uh, a, a Notre Dame offense and defense, so they definitely look forward to playing Notre Dame. Well, Lou Holtz knows USC very well indeed. Let's catch up with him and hear what he's got to say about them. Well, USC-Notre Dame is one of the great rivalries in the entire country, and I think it was in June the game was sold out, and we're talking about 100,000 people. Southern Cal's picked to win the Pac-10 championship. Once again, they have a great quarterback in Todd Marinovich, and they have a, an outstanding running back in Ricky Irvins. Uh, their offensive line is always big and strong, and we've been fortunate to beat Southern Cal the last couple of years, and, and this does not sit well with them. They have a great tradition, a great history, and they spend a couple hours a week on Notre Dame year-round. I know that this is not just a football game for them, it's a crusade, so to speak. And uh, it'll be a difficult challenge uh, to go out there and play in front of that many hostile fans, but also the fact that you'll be playing against a great football team. But there's just something about the Southern Cal-Notre Dame game 
that brings an air of excitement to our football team that you don't find there in other games. That we have the opportunity to coach in that type of environment and that type of atmosphere and that big of a game is something that I have really cherished being here at Notre Dame. Well, Lou Holtz talked about USC's crusade against the Irish, but it's been a crusade with a losing cause recently. As you see, they've lost seven in a row. That's uh, the longest winning streak in this series, which began in 1926, and uh, the Irish lead it 34-23-4. I'm going to go out on a limb right now, Wayne, and I'm going to say that uh, USC are going to end that streak tonight. They're going to win. Well, I think you're wrong, Nick, because I think uh, they have to go into this game uh, to build their confidence to go against uh, the number one uh, a contender with a chance of doing something uh, at the end of the season. I, I, I think uh, the, you'll see a big win here by uh, Notre Dame. Well, if they're going to win, of course, they're going to need the rocket. And we understand that uh, he obviously went out with a thigh strain last week. We understand that he won't start, but he will play. And if ever we needed an illustration of how, how this team leans on the rocket, we saw it last week, didn't we? Yes, I think that uh, they'll gauge the game and see how it's going, and uh, they'll inter introduce uh, Rocket uh, as, uh, as to the m mood of the game. And I think you'll see the Heins Heisman Trophy uh, candidate uh, doing an excellent job here. I look forward to two touchdowns by Rocket today. That's how confident I am. Well, I predict I've stuck my head out uh, on the block. I say USC is going to win. Wayne reckons that the Irish are going to win and the Rocket's going to score twice. But one man we haven't talked about that we must talk about is USC's quarterback, a sophomore that's got the NFL scales drooling already, Todd Marinovic. Yes, he's an excellent football player, and uh, I certainly think their defense will have to do extraordinary to keep him off the board. Last year, he threw for over 300 yards against them, and that's when they had a premier defense. This year, they don't have a premier defense, so... Yes, so that's what I look forward to see, a real shootout between the defense of uh, Notre Dame on a forefront and go for uh, an all-out blitz and uh, that's what I look forward to see. Well, we just saw the two coaches there talking uh, about the pre-game show. Lou Holtz, we know very well. Larry Smith is the uh, coach for Southern Cal. He's uh, played for foot. He's, he's been there for four years, done an excellent job. Here's what Notre Dame have done this year. Remember, in week five, they lost to Stanford. That dropped them to six. They made the long haul all the way back to number one. And then, just as they could uh, almost reach the mountain top, they got thumped 24-21 by... Penn State, of course, and that dropped them lower down the order. But coming back to Larry Smith, four years, he's had a he's had a real excellent effect on this team because they were such a dominant team early on in the decade and they fell away, and Larry Smith brought them back close to contention, hasn't he? Yes, he's an excellent coach, and it, I'm sure there was nothing like a win in a win against Notre Dame, which he's never achieved in his career at uh, at uh, the Trojans. So that's what he's really looking for today, a big upset win. But I don't think it's going to happen, Nick. Well, one other stat that uh, we need to talk about is USC's rushing defense. They've only conceded 103 yards a game, which is um, an outstanding record. Um, and uh, that would suggest that the Irish are going to be up against it as far as establishing a running game is concerned. Yes, but they've got such a balanced attack that they can go at you from different ways. And I see Rocket coming into this game very early because I think it'll be a close game in the first half and they'll need to bring in Rocket probably at a flanker back or a wide receiver to sort of loosen up the deep threat and then start to run that way. Well, let me remind you of something that happened in this stadium 20 years ago. I'm sure you remember it, Wayne. You're old enough. Joe Theismann, a young man called Joe Theismann, as we see Mr. Reagan there. Joe Theismann came in as quarterback for Notre Dame and he threw for over 500 yards for USC. Do you think Rick Meyer is, is, is capable of um, coming up with a game plan like that? I don't see... Uh, it's not down to Rick Meyer. It's really down to the coach. And I don't see the coach going that way. I see it a good balanced attack. And I see, as I say, the Rock coming in early and playing flanker back and wide receiver and, and destroying them with a deep threat that way. I think it'll be a balanced attack. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see over 500 yards total offense, but I think I think Notre Dame will really come good today. But what about their what about their secondary, which has been so poor all year long? I mean, uh, very mediocre quarterbacks have come up and put three and four hundred yard games up, and here we've got Todd Marinovich, who's an outstanding quarterback by any standards in college football. How, how are they going to deal with him? I think that they'll do very, very well. I think it'll be a high-scoring game, but I think Notre Dame will come out winners. Well, let's take a look at what Notre Dame have done so far this season. Just a reminder, of course, we've seen all these games live here at, on Screen Sport. They racked up three wins, then they got upset by Stanford in the game, but I don't think anybody who saw it will ever forget. Then things went very much according to plan after that, including a big win over the Miami Hurricanes, and Pittsburgh Navy, Tennessee, and then Penn State. Well, they knew it was going to be tough. Penn State, of course, have not conceded more than 21 points all season in the game. And of course, uh, 
Notre Dame picked up 21 in the first half, but it was no further. And uh, Penn State came back and won that one. Final game is against USC. Really a very tough fixture list for the Irish. And I think I think, um, I think think they've done well just to sort of lose the two games, haven't they, don't you think? Yes, I think of all their uh, misconceptions at the beginning of the season, they had no misconception about their defense. They thought perhaps Myers wouldn't be as good as he was. He came up trumps, and that's what scouting is all about. Defensively, they were very concerned. They lost a lot of seniors, and from the changes they've had from various people in and out of positions, Poorman playing, and then someone else playing in his place, various cornerbacks playing and out, I think that's been the problem, that they've never found good consistency defensively. And I think also they haven't put enough pressure on, offense, on the offense. I, I want to see them come out today with a forefront and an all-out blitz, and that's when they're most effective. And we need a big night from Zorich, of course. That goes yes. without saying. Yes, Zorich and Stonebreaker. Uh, both Stonebreaker and Zorich are the inspirational leaders of this team, and they've got to come to the front. Well, Irish have won seven in a row. Wayne Rex is going to be eight. I reckon the streak ends here and now. Our commentators in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, it's the usual crew, of course. It's Paul Horning and it's Ted Robinson. We're just a couple of minutes away from the kickoff. Let's go and join Paul and Ted. Another beautiful night, especially right here in Southern California. It's about 80 degrees every day we've been out here. It's just absolutely perfect and another gorgeous night for football. And the red helmets aloft on one side, gold on the other as Craig Hendrick approaches the ball, ready to kick it. Kicking towards the open end of the Coliseum. And he drives Wallace into the end zone, but he'll come out. And actually, it is Johnny Morton who is out across the 20 to the 22, where Rusty Setzer makes the tackle for Notre Dame. So USC, a team that this season returns only seven starters off their entire football club a year ago. That's just incredible. But this is one of the keys. There's the stats of young Todd Marinovich last year, 33 out of 55 for over 300 yards against Notre Dame as a freshman and I'll tell you one thing there's a lot of rumor about this kid coming out after his sophomore year and turning pro I doubt it I think he'll stay at least another year but this kid can play great three. touch great thrower three receivers in out of a pro set backfield the left hander throws out it's caught underneath by Gary Wellman got a good block and he got to the sidelines and he has a first down across the 35 as Todd Light got blocked out of the play and that's what let Wellman get outside and Wellman's the number one receiver as we take a look at the offensive line from USC. Wellman, that's his 55th catch of the year. 14-yard pickup for a first down in Notre Dame, but a little late getting to that little uh, flat pass. He was wide open and then went right up the sidelines, Ted. USC's offensive line, then Mark Tucker that guards their best player. And then the offensive backfield, Royster 31, the tailback, 1,000-yard man, and there's your top receiver in Gary Wellman, the guy that Notre Dame's really going to have to keep a clamp on. First down at the 36. Four-man rush and underneath to Wellman again. And that'll be another first down up near midfield. And it's early in the game, but that pass looks awfully familiar if it you're really a Notre fan this year. And of course, again, uh, pretty good pass protection for USC. And that really starts off a good passing attack. You give that quarterback time, and especially a kid with this much ability as we take a look at the defensive backfield for Notre Dame. And again, you look at the defensive backfield, you wonder how in the heck can Notre Dame play as well as they have this year? You've got a free safety. It's the third different free safety yeah. they're starting this year. And, and you know another thing, uh, Ted, they've given up 24 points a game average, which is very unusually high. Look here at the option here. Wow. You can see he doesn't run that too good, yeah, but he yeah. get a break. And Kowalkowski missed a tackle on Mazio Royster, and he runs the ball inside the Notre Dame 45. So tackling, which is... Well, it's been sporadic at best this year for Notre Dame. Okay. Heard him here. He said, look, I don't want it here. Take it. He's running the option. He's not a great <laughs> runner of the option, but this kid can run. Royster, he's over 100,000 yards of rushing already. 184 carries coming in, 992 yards. He's averaging over five yards a pop. And every time he runs for over 100 yards, they usually win. And he's done that five times this year. Here is Royster up the middle, and that'll be a first down to the Notre Dame 40. Zorich has started the game. Zorich has not started a game since his injury, but he has been the starter on this 
series on the defensive front for Notre Dame. You know, it's amazing. Really, when you look at the defense this year, they got three bona fide All-Americans. Maybe the number one draft uh, draft choice in the whole draft. Todd Light here. Of course, you've got George, All-American. Stonebreaker's made all every All-American. Yet, here's a defense that's given up so many yards, over 266 yards a game. That's the average. That's the average that they've given up. And over 24 points a game. It's very, very high for a top-ranked team. Middle. Out of the eye, it's Royster, and there's a pretty good hole. And he gets about six yards before Demetrius Dubose brings it down. You, in all fairness to the Notre Dame defense, now last week, the Notre Dame defense played pretty well. Penn State got three touchdowns. Second One of them four. was a gift and an interception. From the, the key was that late in the game, Penn State's able to drive the field against them. Exactly. And of course, offensively, they got hurt last week against Penn State in the second half. They just couldn't move the football, didn't make many first downs. They tried to uh, run the football and stuff it down the throat. They just got caught. Second and four here at the Notre Dame, 34. And it's Royster again. And he's brought down just short of the first Major down marker. And DeBose again made the tackle. Demetrius DeBose on the stop. And this is going to be third down and very short yardage for the Trojans. Again, a three Ricky yards. Irvin started a tailback third for USC one. this year, but he was hurt early in the year. A bad ankle injury that's never really recovered. And Royster, who was thinking about transferring, he was Buried so deep on the depth chart here his first two years, got a chance and has become a thousand yard runner. Third down and a foot here at the Notre Dame 30 yard line. Royster seven yards deep in the eye and he gets the ball and he gets not much but enough for the first down. He got across the 30 and that's all he had to do. Where he got piled up, Stonebreaker first there. Nice opening grab so far for USC. They mix it up well, start off throwing the football to Wellman, a couple of completions. And now they go to the run. We'll take a look at Chris Zorich in the middle of that defense. And Notre Dame's going to wind up. If they don't move Zorich as they have in other games this year, he's going to be blocked a lot by Mark Tucker, who's the All-American guard, the best blocker on that USC line. Four down linemen now. Two linebackers and a blitz. And it's Stonebreaker, and he got picked up, but Marinovich tripped and fell. Lockwood, the fullback, stayed home, and he picked up Stonebreaker on the blitz, but Marinovich, and again, maybe Paul, it's, he sees it coming. He's limping, too. He's limping back to the hall. Now watch as his feet get caught up with the center. He doesn't get away from the center quick enough, Ted. And right here, no, he just, he oh, oh, he, he tripped, he over, tripped over the back. Yeah. I thought he got tripped up by the center, but on the replay, you could easily see he just got tripped up by the back coming in there to pick up Stonebreaker, and he tripped up the corner. And so it's second down now and 16, a six-yard loss on that play. Four-man rush, that ball looked like it was deflected. It was caught anyway by Royster. Andre Jones and DeBose make the tackle, and they gain about eight yards on the play. George Williams got a piece of the ball. Good luck there. That ball just happened. It was deflected. Most of the time it'll be incomplete, but it did get out on target. Picked up eight. Well, here you go. Now here's the Notre Dame's defensive season comes down to this play right here. Third down and eight. <laughs> they have this put so bad. many teams into third and eight this year and haven't been able to, to make the third down right. play. Ravage right. goes to the shotgun for the first time. Only three men rush. Bob Dahl gets in. Marinovich up. And that pass is complete for a first down. The first and goal inside the 10 to Larry Wallace. And he forced him out of the pocket, of course, Marinovich. That good arm, watch. That's Larry Wallace. 18-yard pickup. He's wide open right here. He can just feel nobody's around him. Here comes the safety now. That's Willie Clark. So Wallace was caught, that's his 19th catch of the year, gives USC first and goal here, five minutes into the game. USC started from the 22, and now they're at the Notre Dame nine yard line. And it's Royster straight ahead to the six. There's your Royster. They pile up with DeBose, Stonebreaker. 
Well, USC is coming off a thrilling victory last week over UCLA. And the people around here were so excited at the luncheon yesterday where Professor Reagan gave a Second very goal, inspirational Second. speech in Notre Dame uh, USC luncheon, which incidentally, Ted, there were 400 people there. No kidding. And half and half was, I guess, it was about 65, 35 fans, but there was a well, lot of Notre Dame fans at that luncheon here. Professor Reagan. I was polling people as they were leaving who was the better speaker, Horning or Reagan. <laughs> You, you drew about 50-50. In fact, he uh, flipped the coin out for the opening kickoff here today. Now Marinovich takes a timeout as he, to the line. So from second and goal at the six, no score. We'll pause for a regional break. Well, as uh, USC covered. take a timeout, um, I think I'm feeling slightly happier with the two of us, Wayne, so far. USC have moved the ball very effectively and efficiently so far. Efficiently so far. Yes, they've used their uh, premier wide receiver, Wellman, very well with two catches, and the rest of it has been Royster carrying the ball except for one carry. Uh, it looks like uh, they're on target, and it looks like they're uh, playing very well, but uh, we haven't seen uh, Notre Dame out there yet, and I think it'll be a very high-scoring game, but I still stick to my guns. I think Notre Dame are better than the USA. Well, from what we've seen, we're certainly in for a cracker of a game. Let's have a look at uh, one of the key plays in the drive so far, and it was uh, Wallace, this man here, making the catch. It was a good catch. Yeah, Wallace uh, had good coverage here, and the uh, cornerback comes back to cover the run, and with the quarterback uh, loose to the outside, and it's a bad mistake because he leaves his wide man wide open. Free safety's got to come over and cover then. And so uh, the drive stays alive, and the ball is now down on the six-yard line. It started off at the 22 of USC, and they've kept the ball for over five minutes. And there's no question that, uh, well, we knew they were going to be pumped up, but they really are pumped up for this one, aren't they? Yes, I mean, the opening drive, they've, uh, they've had a good play se selection. They've marched down the field with a competent offense, and uh, it looks like they might even go in and score, Nick. Well, it certainly does, but uh, that doesn't mean anything in, uh, in Notre Dame season, of course. They've been behind and come back before, but uh, certainly the early honours so far have gone to USC's offence over Notre Dame's defence. And it does seem that since Zoric had that kneecap problem a few weeks ago, he hasn't quite been the impact player that he was in earlier on. No, he hasn't been able to make the effective run up the middle, and it definitely looks like that uh, uh, he needs a rest before the ball game. And uh, as we continue to wait for this timeout, which is going on quite a long time, we'll wait and see what's happening. As Marinovich, it's certainly more than 60 seconds. I wonder, uh, wonder what the problem is, but it looks like we're just about ready. So it's second down and goal, the ball now resting on the six-yard line. And Todd Marinovich at the helm for USC. Well in motion. And it's Royster outside. Devon McDonald spun him around, and then Greg Davis and Zorich and Stonebreaker all get up. Good pursuit that time defensively, Ted. Everybody swarmed to the football. It's a very, very good offensive football team. And USC's problem is they haven't, they've had, they've had almost the same kind of problem Notre Dame has had. They can't stop anybody either. So, yeah. uh, you know, this game on paper coming in was a matchup of two offensive football teams that could put some points on the board. And this is a very impressive opening drive for USC. They've controlled it almost seven minutes here. And they have third and goal at the five. And they go to a shotgun on third and goal. Watch Wellman in motion. He'll be man to man. Now Dahl forcing Marinovich to dump it out, and it is incomplete. Now is it oh, intercepted? Inter Debose made the dive. Did you see that referee down yeah. there? He was in fact, wasn't he? He said, no, he's on, he's on his knees hollering. Yeah. Incomplete. I thought it was intercepted there for a minute. So did I. This, uh, that referee had moved that fast in years. <laughs> moved so fast he slipped and fell. There it is. Good pressure here. Kowalkowski in on the pass. It was deflected. George Williams deflected it. Good call. That hit the ground. And so senior Quinn Rodriguez tries a dead-on 23-yarder. And the drive culminates with three. Maybe a good omen for Notre Dame because that's how they beat Miami. They got, were able to stop Miami on drives from putting it in the end zone. But USC on this opening drive takes it better than 70 yards and settles for three on the game's first possession. shot of downtown Los Angeles. You can tell it's late at night. The uh, freeway's moving, Wayne. But, uh, 
And interesting, there we go, there's the rocket. And uh, I wonder what he's going to do on this return. A few results that uh, we've got in early. BYU, the number two ranked team, they've thumped Utah State, no big surprises there. Miami early over Syracuse. Important that uh, the Hurricanes win there to maintain their status. Texas have beaten Baylor. Very much uh, an outside chance there of winning the national championship. Texas A&M, well, they've done their final standing no harm at all with a big win over TCU. And uh, this one is at half time, the all Arizona clash 14 14 there. The Sun Devils against Arizona. We'll have uh, more updates for you later on. There's quite a few games already finished. We'll make sure we bring you uh, all the results and uh, keep you in touch with the games in progress. But I think uh, Notre Dame defensively will be pleased that they limited them to a field goal at the end of that drive. Yes, it was a good play. Very unfortunate that he didn't uh, intercept. And uh, here we see Rocket back in the game uh, and uh, look for some uh, explosive packages out of him. Wouldn't be a bit surprised, Nick, to see him a touchdown. Well, we, you, you said it at the start of the show and you're sticking with it, Wayne. Now, listen, we talk about Wayne uh, Lou Holtz as a man who likes to play ball control football. USC kept the ball for six and a half minutes there. Great play drive, good play selection, and they made a good job of doing everything except scoring seven points. Well, everybody's avoided the rocket on kickoff, so I wonder what USC are going to do. Let's find out. USC, and it is high and it is short to the far side, and it is taken by Ismail on a handoff. And he breaks several hits and is still going and just got dragged down by the legs as he crossed the 35-yard line. He puts them on their feet. Every time he touches the ball. He really does. Every time. Rick He's Meyer. Rick Meyer had only thrown four interceptions all year until the Penn State game. He had one bad throw and then one forced throw late in the game that Probably the first time that you would say he made mistakes this year. Gives to Waters on first down, and there was a pretty good hole there, but one man knives through to break it up, and that's Gideon Morrell, who's starting as an inside linebacker for USC. There's Notre Dame's offense. McGuire, Ryan, Helt, Jerkovic, and Sandry. Tackle to tackle. Your skilled players. Fire, Waters, Culver. Rodney Culver has had a very, very good year for Notre Dame. Leads the team in rushing with 673 yards. Meyer rolling to the wide side. And that one's almost intercepted. Intended for Lake Dawson, a freshman, and that ball was nearly picked off by Calvin Holmes. Well, a great defensive play by Calvin Holmes here. He played Notre Dame's rollout to a T. They most likely, when they do roll out, they try to go to a little corner pattern, and he was ready for it. USC defensive line and the backfield. Now their backfield, Paul, isn't that much different than Notre Dame's secondary. They had to replace everybody this exactly. year. But they've been able to get a secondary that's come up with some interceptions. That's the biggest difference between them and Notre Dame. Third down and eight. Quarterback draw. And not going to go anywhere. Meyer wrapped up, gains a couple of yards, and that'll be a three down and out for Notre Dame. Terry McDaniels and Scott Ross make the tackle for USC, just shy of the 40-yard line. So that'll bring Hendrick on to punt, something Notre Dame has not done very much this year. Their offense has been so explosive. But USC is a pretty good punt returner. They have Lockwood as the deep back. Joel Scott, the up back. Beautiful kick. And Lockwood's going to let it go. And it's going to be down by Todd Light inside the five. Good coverage by Todd Light. And that ball's going to be down to the two-yard line. A 60-yard punt for Craig Hentry. 3-0 Notre Dame as we pause now for a regional break. back 3-0 then to USC midway through the first and in sharp contrast to Southern California who kept the ball for six and a half minutes none of them kept it for precisely 19 seconds and they got out of a hole courtesy of that big 60-yard punt yes uh, not firing very well on offense uh, at this moment of time but uh, a great relief from uh, the punter with an excellent punt and Todd Light downing the ball inside the uh, set wall on the six-yard line so let's look at the defense and let's hope they put on an outstanding rush here to uh, put pressure on the young quarterback 
So let's see what happens now. Here's the Conquerors of Notre Dame. They beat Pittsburgh 22-17. That might just get them a, a top 10 rating. And the Houston wrap up their game in Tokyo. Nebraska, Oklahoma, no score at all. Tennessee, number 14. Well, they should have been Kentucky, and they have. With something to spare there, Tennessee will maintain their place. There's a shock. Iowa, who were on their way to their role, the Rose Bowl a couple of weeks ago, lost a couple straight now. Minnesota improving. Virginia, look at that. They were number one just about a month ago. They'll probably be out of the top 25 now. They've lost to Virginia Tech, and they lost big. Michigan, they're still uh, hanging in there. They're still mathematically in with a chance of the Rose Bowl. They've beaten Ohio State. What well, that's up to Virginia. Yes, they've certainly fallen apart, Nick, and it's been that type of season that uh, the games you think you're going to win, you lose, and it's a very, very strange season. The number one position has been a jinx all year long, and it's currently occupied by Colorado. But for how long? Anyway, the ball on the three-yard line, USC, 97 yards to go. They give it to the tailback, Zorich and Nick Dubose both get in there to wrap up Reister before he got very far. Mazio Reister, young man in high school, was a blocking back. You know who he blocked for? Give it to me. Eric Bieniemy, whom Notre Dame will see in the Orange Bowl this exactly. year, Colorado and tailback. What a great year he's had. I thought maybe uh, Bieniemy would be a lot higher, I think, uh, about this time as far as the Heisman Trophy was concerned. You know, I really think he deserves a little bit more consideration than they give any. Second down and 10. Now he's going to try to throw it on a rollout, being pressured by McDonald. The pass is caught by Wellman. Just Good. shy of the first down, Greg Davis on the coverage. Look at Wellman. That's three for Wellman. I tell you, that was real good coverage, actually, by Greg Davis. He had his man covered. It was just a good pitch and a good cut to the sidelines. You can see he's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. Here comes the rollout. Good block by the fullback here, and enabling to get to the outside, and he throws it on the run. Now, that's not really bad coverage, just a good pitch and a good catch. He, Marinovich is incredibly accurate. He really is. Well, it's third down and two now at the 11-yard line. Raul Spears in the backfield along with Lockwood. And this one is caught. That'll be a first down. Joel Scott makes the reception at the 16. Now, if you're going to give him that much time, he's going to have an excellent night. He's already over 2,000 yards throwing with 12 touchdowns on the year. And, you know, you give this kid this much time, he's going to eat you alive. Well, the way Notre Dame plays it, Marinovich could complete 40 passes tonight doing yep. this. Well, he's on his way. He's off to a real, real good start. Now, Notre Dame, five men attacking the quarterback. You see that little turnout pattern, and the defender back there had his back turned to the inside. It was an easy target to get to get beat on a little square out. Oh, look at the big hole for Royster. That's trouble, and the secondary has to make the tackle. That's Willie Clark and Rod Smith. And a big run for Royster, and Southern Cal has moved it out from trouble. Now 16-yard pickup. Little trap block in. Notre Dame's in a little stunt. You saw Zorich move to his right. Stone Blake uh, uh, gets tied up by the guard. And then Royster has a huge hole. 16 yard pickup. That was Mark Tucker. So Mark Tucker, Clark. their All American guard, went on Stonebreaker there. Now it's out to the USC 33. And on first down, that ball goes to Scott Lockwood. And Notre Eric Dame. Jones in makes the tackle I for think Notre the Dame. The defensive scheme is a little bit more active uh, this week for Notre Dame. They're blitzing a lot, lot more, uh, Ted, here in the early going. I see Stonebreakers blitz three or four times already. They're down with four down linemen. They're trying to rush the passer with four and five men now. Well, it's USC with second and eight from their 35. Five minutes to go first quarter, and the Notre Dame defense has been on the field almost the entire quarter. 3-0 Trojans. And that ball is a great play fake. And it is almost picked. Todd Light came diving in on a ball that I guess was intended for Wellman. There was a man who cut underneath Crane, the tight end. Great reaction almost by Todd Light. Yeah. Almost got the interception. And Light dove and almost picked that ball off. And it'll be third down and eight again. Todd Light. I tell you what, you think Notre Dame's had secondary problems this year, folks. Hey, next year that man's gone. 
and so is Greg Davis, a strong safety. So Notre Dame is going to have more of a question mark, I think, in their secondary heading into spring football 91 than they did this year. Wellman in motion from the shotgun. And Wellman has another catch. Well, well, the time is, I mean, he's, he's going to kill you doing that. Well, see, the safeties are so deep. They line up about 13 yards deep, and their first move is back. All the receivers have to do is about a 14 or 15-yard hook in or hook out, Ted. And all they got to beat is the linebacker. they got to free the linebacker, and he's going to be wide open right there. He gets by the linebacker, you see. There's 31, Demetrius Trapoz, and he just cuts to the outside. Willie Clark is too far yeah. back to make that coverage. That's 17 yards on the pickup. John Jackson caught 14 against Notre Dame last year. This kid's going to catch more than that tonight if they don't do 14 something. 14 passes, uh, Jackson. That was one shot of a record. First down, it's Royster. Tripped up as he went through the hole. And I believe that was DuBose who got in there. Yes, it was. And tripped him up. That's frustrating, I'm sure, for the Notre Dame defense because it's happened to them so much this year. But I think... It is, it's a little unfair to constantly pick on the secondary from the standpoint of really? Paul. is too good. If you let him stand back there exactly. like you did on that last play, he's going to kill you. A good pass defense always starts off with a good pass rush. Uh, normally, if you've got a very good pass rush, any time you see a, a great secondary, if you interview them, I guarantee you seven times out of eight, they'll say, well, we've got a real good pass rush. The guys put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Second and six, Notre Dame 44, shotgun. Underneath Wellman again, good play. Stonebreaker closed on him quickly, but I think the mark is going to get a first down at the 38. There's Stoney, already two. Wellman. Packed house tonight, a sellout here, and there's not too many sellouts at this stadium. 92,000 plus here. Well, they're sitting in seats tonight that they normally don't use, <laughs> except for the Olympic Games. They're sitting out by the Olympic torch. But what a huge and uh, a huge rivalry, of course, that brings out the great stars of both sides. Timmy Brown is here tonight, so is Greg Bell. They both play for the Raiders. We're here tomorrow. Saw Charles White on the USC sideline. Anthony Davis is here. Mike Garrett does the radio. I saw Mike earlier. I saw, uh, of course, at the luncheon yesterday uh, representing USC with Frank Gifford. Lou Holtz, talking about pass rush, knows how important that is, too, because two years ago when Notre Dame came in here and beat USC, that's how they won the game. They harassed Rodney Pete into a numerous mistakes with a great pass rush. Frank Stams now plays here for the Rams, the key player in that game. First and ten at the Notre Dame 38. And blitz, there's blitz. a blitz, Stonebreaker. Got him. See that great pass defense? Right great pass defense look that time. Yeah. <laughs> From the outside, Stoney moves over on the outside and might have confused the USC defense a little bit. Uh, you must do it. Nine yard sack. All American inside linebacker. Mike Stonebreak. One of four Kodak All Americans that Notre Dame had this year. Ian Light. Sorich. You know, it's amazing, as I said. Three All-Americans on defense, and your defense is giving up 24 points a game. Second down and 19. Rinovich steps up here, and he's going to run. And he dragged down Devon McDonald. Nice job to drag Marinovich down at the original line of scrimmage. With a lot of graduating people on the Notre Dame defense. That's a man who's going to play a factor next year, Devon nice McDonald. Quick. Also number 31, Demetrius DeBose. Yep. They're well set in the linebacker, of course, for as far as quickness is concerned. What they've got to shore up, just like we've been talking about all year long, is the pass defense and a pass rush. Defensive lineman, I think, will be a priority in this incoming freshman. Third and nine now at the Notre Dame 37. Wellman in motion. Marinovich looking for him. No. Threw it instead. Incomplete intended for Travis Henna. Diving at about the 26 of Notre Dame. And now USC will have fourth down and nine, and they're too far away for a field goal. And we'll see how the Trojans play it here. 
bring out the putter, Ron Dale. On fourth and nine, and Notre Dame will have Ismail back at the 10. Well, we only got a minute and a half left in this first quarter. Notre Dame has only ran off three offensive plays. They're going to get it back right here. This might be their best chances for the Rocket Left to go. Oh, good bounce for USC, and this will be down inside the five. So Ron Dale does a nice job on the punt. And the Irish will be pinned back at their four-yard line. When they come back early, early in the game, who's been all USC, but they only lead three to nothing. First down, Ricky Waters carried for just a few yards, so it's uh, second and a few to go with uh, Notre Dame deep in their own territory, but still trailing three to nothing after forcing Southern Cal to punt on their last possession. Kelly Gibb to Culver. Oh, big hole up the middle, and Culver actually ran into Mirko Jerkovic, or else he would have had more yardage. Out to the 19, where Morrell made the stop. 10-yard pickup for Rodney Culver, holding that football in both arms, boy. Making it very sure he didn't want to drop that football. That now, we, you know, Paul, we talk about Royster being a 1,000-yard runner in the great running attack of USC. Notre Dame has run the football for about 500 more yards this year than USC has. A lot of kids, they spread around to spread that football around to Ricky Water. And, of course, the rocket average is eight yards a pop. Over the time for Meyer, the pass for Ismail is just overthrown. And coverage on the post against Calvin Holmes. But that's that a good play, even, that's a, even though that's an incompletion. That's a good offensive play, but that puts some pressure on the defense. You've got to let the defense know when you have a guy like the Rocket, you've got to throw three or four of these a game and let him have a shot at that football. And that's one pass to the next try. I think Notre Dame will work a lot more on trying to get the timing down pat. They've been so close on that pass so many times this year. So the time remaining in the first quarter. The pitch goes to Tony Brooks. And he breaks outside. Tony Brooks. And he's out across the 40. And that's another Irish first down. Larry Wallace pushed him out. And Tony Brooks made a good move and got outside of traffic. Went down the right sidelines. The 23-yard pickup for Mr. Brooks. Take a look at him. Here's the pitch. He's out of the tailback. Watch Rodney Culver. Breaks a tackle, and then he's all alone down the right sideline. Don't check that. That was Marcus Hopkins who pushed him out. Of course, Tony Brooks and Ricky Waters both missed the Notre Dame victory here two years ago. They were suspended for that game by Lou Holtz. Maybe a little extra incentive tonight for both. As Meyer on the option, dragged down by Terry McDaniels, but he picks up about four to the 46. The option was what hurt USC last year. Rice was the leading rusher against the Trojans, who had the best rushing defense in the country last year. And in this first quarter, USC spent most of the time moving the football, but all they have is three points to show for it, and now it's the Irish on the move as the quarter comes to an end. The first quarter comes to an end here in Los Angeles, and the score is Southern California, three, Notre Dame nothing. But Notre Dame, just perhaps for the first time, beginning to threaten. Wayne, let's have a look at some of the action. Yeah, here we see Myers uh, on a play-action fake and uh, an excellent pass on a post pattern to the one man that's going to win this game, Rocket, and that really loosens up the defense. When they have a man like that running at him and getting a deep threat, you can see here, here we are, Brooks now benefiting from this long throw, bounces it outside, poor tackling there, and uh, he gets a good run out of it, and that's how it loosens up the whole defense, uh, because they have to play the Rocket deep. Even when the Rocket doesn't make a completion, He's still a threat, isn't he? He, he? he strikes fear into the heart of everybody when he's just on the field, doesn't he? Well, as we said at the beginning of the game, Nick, uh, the Rocket is such an inspirational player that uh, he touches the ball and things happen. Yeah, we just missed the first play of the second quarter here. Um, but uh, not a lot there. USC stuffing Tony Brooks there. But uh, it's tight. It's 3 nothing to Southern California. We're at the top of the second quarter, but Notre Dame perhaps just beginning to settle down at last. About Notre Dame, he gets disgusted. <laughs> For what? She's never beaten him. Yeah, that, that does. Option on third down. And Meyer 
there is going to be stopped just short. Almost snuck through there to get it. But he'll be stopped just short by Willie McGinnis. I saw on the linebackers here. Got a good block. Jerkovic and Ryan over there on the linebacker. He gets right up. Powell's on top, but not before Meyer picked up about four. And Notre Dame's going to go for it on fourth down and a half a yard with 13.50 to play in the first half. Fourth down and a half a yard. Two tight ends. Culver, whoa, I don't know. That's going to be close. He might have been able to just lunge He's forward and get it. He's got a better length of the football. And Lou Holtz gambling early here. He made it. And now the yeah. rocket checks in. They're going to bring the sticks out here, but that should make it enough for the first down. See where the stick is. The ball has crossed the 48-yard line. The sticks are shy of the 48, so it should be a first down with ease. We'd like to welcome the Sports Channel America Fighting Irish Sweepstakes winners, the Glasses from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, who are here today, Merle and his son, Steve. They received a trip for two to Los Angeles, including round trip airfare, hotel accommodations, and game tickets. We welcome the Glasses and hope they're enjoying the game here. The Sports Channel America Fighting Irish Sweepstakes winners. Oh, a minute and a half into the second quarter, Notre Dame with a first down at the USC 48. Ismail the tailback. Short side pitch. Oh, he got hit. Good hit. Put on Ismail. That was Ross again that made the stick. And a very short pickup. Gain of only a yard for the Rocket. But that gets him back into the thick of things. You know, a lot of times when you're nursing an injury, we take a look at the first quarter stats. And yards passing, of course, Notre Dame zipped in that first quarter. Of course, they only had the football for three or four plays. Now second and nine. Ismail the tailback again. And he's going to get it again. And then again, be hit down by Ross. I tell you, he's quick. Well, Ross is playing Ismail. Exactly. Pretty obvious. He's just keying the tailback. Notre Dame with only three first downs so far. USC, here we take another look at Ross. There's Gene McGuire, got a very good block on the inside, but nobody touches Ross. And now it's third and six at the Southern Cal 44, and Ismail is wide right. Raw play, Waters, big first throw, and I think Waters got the first down as he gets to the 38. Boy, oh, not no, a very, it's going to oh, be very close. They marked it back inside. Boy, they really gave him a weak mark there. Yeah, they Still should it. be enough. He didn't make it. Well, yes, he did yeah, make I think it. He yeah, did. he's, he's got to get it past the 38-yard line. I think he did. Yeah, and he did. They won't even measure this time. No. Gordon Reese says first down, Notre Dame. There's Scott Ross. So this is Notre Dame's best drive, obviously. The first one was three downs and out. This drive started at the four-yard line. I see what you try to do is get the Rocket on man-to-man. -man. Now he's going to be double-covered out there if they rotate a zone over there. And off the right side, Good nothing defense. there. Nothing there is right. Yep. And again, that was Ross who stood right in that hole. And Fought off the Rodney Culver block. See Culver and Waters talking to each other. Play stopped for nothing. Waters, who's played in spurts this year, but you see eight touchdowns. He's still, he's averaged better than five and a half yards a carry this year. Second down, eight, 36 yard line. Light fake, Meyer rolling out. Throwing it, Tony Smith catches, 25-yard line. First down. Caught that in front of Calvin Holmes. 11-yard pickup. Tony Smith, the second leading receiver for Notre Dame. That's his 15th catch this year. Ismail with 30, leads the team. 
And Notre Dame now to the 25 with a first down. 3 0 USC. We have 10 55 to play in the first half. Adrian Gerald now flank the lower part of your screen. Culver. Oh, good tackle up from the secondary. Came Stefan Pace. And he made a very nice play to keep that one maybe from going the distance. I guarantee you, if he misses the tackle at six points, he was the last man to save a touchdown there. Rodney would have been in. Culver got it to the 18. See, only five times this year has Notre Dame gotten inside the 20 and not scored. They're at the 18 here with second and three. This might be a good throwing down. Bullhouse backfield, not going to happen. Option. Meyer, whoa. Now that's not bad. Meyer broke two hits. Barber had him behind the line, and Meyer got away and gets a first down before Holmes makes the tackle. I tell you, he doesn't look shifty. He doesn't no. look quick, but he somehow gets some yardage out of that play. It doesn't look like it's in sequence or in sync, but. It doesn't look like the way it did yeah, last it, year, is what you're saying. It looks <laughs> like it, it's a delayed. Uh, <laughs> Option, does it? The slow mo option. First down at the 12. Blitz. And they got Notre Dame. First down, see? They're just guessing on first down. I guarantee you, uh, if you look at tendencies over, over the year, Notre Dame does not throw the ball on first down. Well, Waters just committed a very, very bad penalty that it's going to hurt Notre Dame terribly. Waters just got flagged for 15 yards. Here comes the blitz. Look at the two inside linebackers. See, they got too many people in here. He can't block them all. Let's see if we can pick up the penalty. Oh, they didn't let it run. Ricky Waters got tangled up with one of the USC defenders. I believe it was Pace as the play ended. Personal foul offense will be second down. And I would think that uh, knowing how Lou Holtz feels about this, you may not see Ricky Waters for a while because that makes the play an 18-yard loss for Notre Dame. Three yards on the play, 15 more on the penalty. So now Notre Dame gets backed up to the 30-yard line, and they have second down and 28. Trips right. Now they might take that big tight end right there who's lined up at the 30-yard line, Derek Brown, and throw him into the pattern. Nope, he's blocking. Over the middle, there he is. Oh, it's a tight end screen to Brown. Straight ahead inside the 15. Little delay to Derek Brown. You're right, he blocked it first, and then he runs it all the way down to the 13-yard line. Well, that's been his pattern most of the year. He stays in on trips and usually blocks and then he delays over the middle. Good call this time. Look at those big hands. And he's going to leave this tackler on the ground. Watch that. The tackler hadn't gotten up. Stefan Pace. That's what it means to bring Derek Brown down. Got a knee in the head, I think. Let's hope Pace gets up. Let's pause now for a regional break. USC, but Notre Dame really uh, putting together a very good drive that started in their own five-yard line, and the latest big play, of course, came from tight end Derek Brown, which left the poor old safety man, Stefan Pace, gasping for air. Here we see an excellent play, design play, where the tight end normally stays in the blocks on trips, and he goes out on the pass pattern, and I wouldn't fancy being Stefan Pace for anything here. Uh, you go one-on-one -on -one in open field to Derek Brown, and you're going to come off second best, aren't you? Yes, that's for sure, Nick. Uh, well, let's hope uh, Stefan Pace is OK, because uh, he's certainly a very useful player. But it's been a good drive, I think, this from another Dame. They've, uh, they've dug themselves into a hole a couple of times and dug themselves out of it. No, no, no more evidence there than uh, with that second and 28, but they've kept their heads, haven't they? Yes, and some excellent plays from the quarterback, uh, scrambling for a first down, diving over uh, people and breaking tackles. Uh, he's uh, really come in well as a runner today, Meyer, and he, they all want to win. You can see it in their, in their determination. They want to get back on track and go to go against Colorado in the Orange Bowl and really do a job. Yes, they, uh, of course, meet Colorado in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day, a game you'll be able to see here on Screen Sport, by the way. We'll give you some more details on that a little nearer the time, but uh, if you want to watch bowl games live, you've got to stick with us on Screen Sport. Anyway, back to the action. Myers in trouble. Breaks away and got one block. Now throws it, and it is incomplete. 
He came very close to crossing the line, but he never did. Then threw incomplete dismay. He got a little anxious, got too anxious. The rocket was wide open. All he had to do was just lay it out there for the completion. And I, the rocket was coming back, trying to pick up uh, a little action there with the block. Trying to help out, Rick. Now Hendrick will try a 31-yard field goal out of Jim Sexton's hole. They take a deep drop. Notre Dame, they drop almost nine yards back on the extra on the placement try. And Hendrick boots it straight through to tie the game. And each team with a long drive only to be stuffed down deep. In Notre Dame's case, the Waters penalty hurt the drive. But the Irish get three. And with 8.55 to play in the first half, we are tied at three. 20 minutes of this game gone so far, and it's just three all. And I think if you told anybody that scoreline without them seeing the game, Wayne, they'd assume that uh, its defense is dominating. But it's been anything but, hasn't it? Yes, it's been a very good offensive display. But when the defense have had to stop them, they've had a, a good uh, effort at doing so. And uh, I'm very impressed with the way Notre Dame has come back in, in the second quarter. They've got their uh, uh, game plan underway, and they're starting to stop uh, the uh, Trojans on their, on their doorstep. Well, here's some more score lines. Miami all over the Orange one. 20 nothing. that in the second. Uh, they could be uh, picking up the national championship. Wake Forest, big win over Vanderbilt. And, uh, they haven't had a winning season for a while. A final there. Southern Methodist losing to Arkansas, 42-29. And uh, Arkansas wrapping up with their Michigan State. They're still uh, just about a ranked team, I think. They've beat Wisconsin 14-9. It was another struggle. They always finish well, Michigan State. They always start badly and finish well, and uh, this year's been no exception. Three all then, about six minutes into the second quarter here at Los Angeles Coliseum. Three all as Hendrick lines this one up to the nine-yard line. And good coverage by Notre Dame. And Greg Lane brings down Curtis Conway as he crosses the 25-yard line. USC at the 28-yard line. And the Notre Dame defense got a much-needed rest during that long 19-play drive. Both teams frustrated. USC went 73 and 60 yards in their first two drives and got no touchdowns, one field goal. Notre Dame got stopped by a penalty. Travis Hanna in motion for the Trojans. And Marinovich underneath to Royster. And Royster out to the 35. They get seven on first down. This I like that offense, though. It's a nice offensive thinking. You know, you go back on first down, you throw in the football, and that's almost like a run. You know, it's a, both these backs come out of the backfield, and they just hook up, hook up in the short zone, and you don't take too much of a chance of interception, and it's only about an eight-yard dump off in the flat, and uh, he's got five or six yards right away. And you know, USC never used to throw to their running backs. Exactly. That's something Larry Smith has done here. Never saw tailbacks catch passes. Second and three at the 35, and this time the tailback will run it. Oh, nice move by Royster, and he got the first down. Got away from Bob Dahl to get to the 40-yard line. Jim Flanagan, inside linebacker, made the play for Notre Dame. And on defense in this game, you're seeing uh, already, I notice a few more underclassmen getting some playing time. Here's one of them in Flanagan. Good coverage. I tell you, he went right to the football. Mr. Flanagan. At the Coliseum in Los Angeles, less than eight minutes to play in the first half. Notre Dame with an 84-yard drive to get a tying field goal. Now USC after the kickoff with a first down at their own 40-yard line. And Marinovich will give to Mazio Royster, and the tailback is into the secondary. And he gets it out to the 47-yard line. And that was Brian Rattigan, 46, who was also in, along with Flanagan on the tackle. Notre Dame getting some people who are going to have to play next year, some experience in this exactly. game. Exactly. Flanagan's one of them. He's a 6'3 freshman from Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Highly recruited, of course, out of Wisconsin last year. Notre Dame hadn't had the chance to play their freshmen and sophomores as much this year. They've had so many close games. It's not going to be a lot of game experience next year with some of the key players. Second down, short yardage, deep throw. And 
the ball was poorly thrown. One of the few times you'll see Marinovic yep. do that. He just threw it behind Wellman. Wellman is wide open on the sidelines. He needs 105 yards tonight to become USC's first receiver to catch passes for over 1,000 yards. Marinovic 9 out of 13 now for 96 yards. Now Larry Smith has had a tough year at times with Marinovich. He suspended him for one game. He benched him for another game when Marinovich threw long. Set him to an open man underneath. But he had a marvelous game against UCLA last week. Now faces third and three at the USC 47. Out of the shotgun. Blitz by the Irish. Marinovich up. Now he's going to be smothered by Bob Dahl. Back inside the 40. I'll tell you, every time, uh, it seems to me, at least from this vantage point all year long, every time they blitz, they cause uh, a little disturbance, don't they? The key Abdul. in the ball, the key to blitzing is you have that faith that your people that you leave back there cover somebody. Exactly. I mean, you, you might as well blitz when you're having a hard time covering somebody. You know, like I've always said, I've just always been a firm believer. The best way to stop a quarterback is put pressure on you. Rocket the deep back. Ron Dale punts it to Rocket on the chance. This punts really hit well. Drives it back to the 12. Up the middle. Oh, he may get outside and just cut Brad down. And he had a lane there. But again, the Rocket exciting with nearly a 20 yard punt return. He's out across the 30. Three all, 6.06 to go in the half as we pause now for a regional break. Sports Channel America's coverage of Notre Dame football continues after these messages. And, and uh, USC forced a punt as Notre Dame's defense starts to get tough. And I think Lou Holtz must be reasonably happy with what he's seen so far. Yes, his defense has certainly risen to the occasion. They're playing at 150% of their capacity. They're really stepping up this game pace here. Here we see a, a rush, uh, both linebackers coming in here. And he's feeling the pressure, and he thinks he's going to get out of it, fakes the pass, and he gets drawn down. And he should have got out of there or eaten the ball earlier because that was a dangerous situation for him. And then, of course, we saw the rocket, and uh, you could hear everybody drawing their breath, couldn't you? Yes, again, one step away from stardom there. He's just have been, just about been twice broken free for a touchdown on these uh, long punts or kickoff returns. And I, I guarantee you you'll see a touchdown from him today, if not two. Well, yes, you, you, you went out on a limb when you said he'd score two tonight, but uh, the way defenses have played, um, that's going to be tough as we see the play selection of the two teams at the moment. It's obviously ground game, first of all, for Notre Dame, but uh, USC going predominantly through the air, but a reasonable balance there. 17 passing plays, just 12 running plays. Paul Horning said earlier that uh, he thinks the Rocket could be the Heisman Trophy winner if he has a good one tonight. Would you agree with that? Yes, certainly. Uh, and uh, he's back in the offense now, and they're going to start using him on the offensive threat here much more now. Three all. There's a play fake and a pass on first down. Oh, the rocket is wide open. And he is inside the Southern Cal 40-yard line. Wide open on the far side. I don't know how you go that unnoticed. There he is. He's playing up on top now. And I guess the play action here holds uh, 29 yards down the right sideline. It holds not only the linebacker, but it frees up that safety. Now, you see there, you see he got double covered. He's lined up in the slot. And he goes right down the right sideline. They double covered the wrong man that time. First down, USC 39 yard line. Tony Brooks. Tony Brooks inside the 35. Calvin Holmes. And Gideon Morrell combined to make the tackle. Brooks gets six hard yards on first down. Got a lot of the turf stuck in his helmet now. See Ricky Waters rooted to the sideline, an unfortunate decision he made in frustration, I'm sure, getting called for that personal foul penalty on the last drive. And he would be surprised if you see much of it. Second and four at the 33. Culver. He did not get the first down. Straight ahead to the 30. And it'll be third down and short yardage. wondering how much next year we may see Culver play tailback the other day. Jerome Bettis, the freshman out of Detroit, so impressing Lou Holtz as the fullback. I wouldn't be surprised next year if we saw some of that combination. Exactly. I think he looks so much like Rodney Culver as it is that he put about 15 more pounds on him. 
Third down and a yard at the 30. Oh, Meyer lost the football. And Stephon Pace comes out with it. They lost it on the option handoff. And Stephon Pace, who got back in after being knocked out, tackling Derek Brown in the last series, comes up with the game's first turnover. And look at Rodney Culver getting a little lesson here from Lou Holtz. We'll take another look at this. Let's see it here. He, he reverses the spinoff. There's the handoff. Or was it a handoff? Was he going to try to keep it? There's a little mix-up there between Rick Meyer and Rodney Culver. I don't know if that was actually supposed to be a handoff right there, or he was trying to pull it out and fumble it. Boy, a tough Notre Dame driving for what would have been a go-ahead score. Four and a half to go. Turns the ball over, and that's what killed him against Penn State last week. Because Notre Dame has not created opposition turnovers this year. Andre Jones dropping back may have tipped it. May have tipped it, threw it off course a little bit because I tell you, Wellman would have caught it. Let's take another look. We'll take another look at Mr. Wellman on the outside. Right here. Now he's going to turn in. Hooks to the outside here. Now watch number seven. Let's see if he touches it. Yes, he did. Good deflection there by Andre Jones. Just enough. One second and ten now, Southern Cal from there, 27. Give it to Royster. And Devon McDonald with an outstanding play. A big time play for a loss of five. And Lou's pretty happy about that. You haven't seen too many of those kind of plays. Tackle behind the line is perfect for losses this year with this Notre Dame defense. Defensive coordinator Gary Darnell. He knows, he knows it's coming up here, third and 15. Let's see how Notre Dame plays it as far as rushing the quarterback in the shotgun. Four rush. Underneath the Royster. He did not get the first down, brought down by a combination of players. And it was Greg Davis and Rod Smith. And at, least he had presence, short. at least he had the presence of mind he had to really go for it. He knew exactly where those first down markers. He just comes up a little bit short. Now watch the uh, linebackers here. They're already five yards deep from the line of scrimmage. Now they go back. See how soft it is underneath there, Ted? They got five yards when they catch the football before they get to the defense. Fourth down, they only need a yard and a half, but they do snap it deep. And Dale boots it out of there. Good punt. And the Rocket driven back inside his 20. Trying to reverse his fail, and Great he cannot. Good punt, good coverage. And USC pins Notre Dame back at the 25-yard line. And with 2.38 to play in the first half, the Irish will get another chance to try and break this time before halftime. We've just seen a first down play there from Jerome Bettix getting his first carry of the game. Brings up a second down for the Irish deep in their own territory. The clock running here in the second quarter, and it remains 3 all. Brooks inside. Oh, Brooks got stuck and he didn't get very much. Good hit inside by Gideon Morrell. Stopped Brooks right in his tracks and now we're under two minutes and Notre Dame will have third down and short yardage. Both these linebackers hit, don't they? Good tacklers on the inside. Morrell and Ross. If the Irish get it first down here, you think they might think about using a timeout. They had very poor timeout use last week. running at a minute 33. Third down and two. Well, if they'd ever throw it here, play action. Whoop. Rocket. You should get the first down. Whoa, that was a pretty good hit, but he did get it. Very good hit by Kurt Barber in pursuit, but Ismail got the first down. Well, they're key. And look at, look at the Rocket Pat, the USC defender, Scott Ross on the helmet. 
good sportsmanship this kid shows. So Notre Dame has a first down. There's a minute 17 to play in the half. And let's see how Lou Holtz plays it. Will he be content to take the tie in at halftime? Or will he have Meyer go upstairs? Clock is running. Meyer's going to throw. Derek Brown, he'll be out of bounds right near the stake. And another first down. That's the play to Derek Brown. 45. How about that? Notre Derek Dame. Brown, two catches coverage. today. Boy, he is going to be some pro. He gets into the pros with that size and that speed. They're going to throw the football to him. You'll see this kid. He'll be an all pro. Oh, yeah. And that catch was a good sign because he caught that ball great with his hands. hands. He's got great hands, great speed. 59 seconds to play in the first half. Notre Dame has advanced the football. Now for a second to first down on this possession to their 46 yard line. The Irish have all three timeouts remaining and a chance to take the lead in at halftime. Notre Dame drove to the Southern Cal 30 on its last possession and lost the football in a fumble. Very damaging last week when Notre Dame drove the ball against Penn State just before halftime and lost the football or lost points when they missed a field goal. Now they're in, they're in a position now to try to get the football down the field for at least a field goal. Meyer to the left this time. Underneath and a good catch by Irv Smith, the tight end. I believe that's his first of the year. He's out of bounds across midfield. He usually comes in and plays uh, in a double tight end situation. Mostly a good blocker for the run. Meyer now five out of eight for 76 yards. First half. It's a good play. It only used up six seconds. Out of bounds. First catch for Irv Smith this year out of Browns Mills, New Jersey. And Notre Dame is second and four here at the Southern Cal 48. Big tight end delay. Here comes the blitz. The Irish pick there it, it up. There it is. Oh, that ball didn't get there. It was tipped. Well, tipped they, on route to Derek Brown. They had the blitz on. They had the great call. Mm -hmm. uh, a little tight end delay There's for Derek over Brown, over and it was deflected. Because all the linebackers were gone. All right, now it's third and four at 50 seconds to play. And Notre Dame, of course, just barely across midfield. I don't know if they consider this a two-down situation or not. Not with four yards to go. 50 seconds in the half. Men come and Meyer throws out to the far side and overthrows Sean Davis. Oh, he was open. That one was offline. And I think Holtz will punt here on fourth and four, if I had to guess, at 45 seconds. And that's exactly what he will do. Took a shot at it. Notre Dame got two first downs, but then they're stopped. There's Derek Brown cutting over the middle right there, and it caused Rick Meyer to overthrow on that pitch. USC showing some rush situation up front. Hendrick gets the kick away, and they let that one go and into the end zone. So Southern Cal will take over at the 20-yard line, 38 seconds, and two timeouts for USC, and a three-all score, not the score very many would have expected here this late in the first half. I really thought there'd be a lot of scoring in this football game, and I really believe it. We're still going to see some scoring here in the second half. Both these teams have, have moved the football quite well, but they just can't get anything done when they get inside the 20 or inside the 30. That was a pretty calm game at the Rose Bowl uh, last week for USC and UCLA until the fourth quarter. That's when things went haywire. <laughs> We're 21 points, uh, three touchdowns in about four minutes. Now Todd Marinovich, 10 out of 15 out. USC has punted on their last three possessions. They start now at the 20 yard line. 38 seconds and they have two timeouts and they still have an opportunity to move the ball down the field. They'll run it on first down and Royster outside. Goes down inbound, stopped for no gain by Greg Davis and Todd Light. And so Larry Smith obviously content to go off at three all. And Southern Cal does not have to put the ball in play again. That, Say again. That, yeah, and Smith shakes his head and yeah, says no, and that'll be out. it. And Holtz says that's okay with me too. 
So the teams fight to a draw here in the first half at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. A lot of offense, but not a lot of points. Two short field goals. 22-yarder by Quinn Rodriguez and a 31-yarder by Craig Hendrick. It's three all at the half. Second half action from Los Angeles in a moment. Los Angeles Coliseum with a halftime score between the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the University of Southern California is, to everyone's surprise, 3-3. Wayne Paul Hordening said it was going to be high scoring. You said it was going to be high scoring, but it's been anything but. Yes, it's been a very good defensive game, and for once, Notre Dame's defense have really come on song. That's right. Well, anyway, let's take a look at the highlights of the first half. It's not the longest of highlights packages we've ever run, I, I must admit, but uh, let's have a look. First of all, here is the field goal from Quinn Rodriguez that opened up the first University of Southern California possession, and that was 3 nothing. A very, very impressive drive, six and a half minutes, 88 yards, and Southern California looked very good at that point. Yes, they played very well, and their opening drive was excellent, and they punched it in with a three-pointer. Now let's have a look at how the Irish got their field goal. And they were driving, and uh, Ricky Waters managed to uh, show a bit of temper there and drew a 15-yard flag, so that pushed them back a bit. Yes, that was a very costly penalty, because without that 15 yards, uh, they would have had a chance to go in and score uh, a six-pointer with a conversion. Uh, here we see what happened after that. Yeah, it took the momentum right out of the drive, but they did come back. And uh, here they are still rolling. You see Waters, the ball carrier, gets absolutely nowhere. And uh, drew 15 yards. He lost three yards on the play. Had a 15-yard penalty, and that brought up a second and 28. And then watch out, the big man's about. Yes, Brown made an excellent play here and just ran over people. And uh, Stefan Page here, unfortunately, was the person he ran over. And uh, it, it, if they could have continued that, that would have been another touch, uh, touchdown, but uh, it didn't happen. Let's have a look at uh, Derek Brown flattening Stefan Pace. But of course, Pace bounced back to uh, recover a fumble later on. An outstanding safety man, but uh, you don't beat Derek Brown in one-on-ones like this. Yes, it very, it's a good form tackle, and he did everything right, but I think uh, De uh, Derek Brown's knee hit his helmet. There's a long third and ten coming up. Rick Meyer looking for it all, but... Uh, He's just throwing it away there. There's certainly no receiver anywhere near it, so that brought out Craig Hendrick to attempt a 31-yard field goal. Myra could have been called for intentional grounding there, but they seem to be fairly soft on that these days. But uh, he obviously saw he was just going to run out of bounds, having lost some yards, so he decided to just sort of lob it into the end zone. And no, no receiver around at all, was there? No, uh, the, and he was had to tip to toe along the, the, uh, the line of scrimmage there, because, as you said, Nicky was nearly uh, over the line of scrimmage. And here's Craig Hendrick. It's only 31 yards. That's automatic for this guy. Don't think we've seen him miss this year, have we? No, he's Mr. Automatic at this sort of distance. And the snap, the hold, the kick. All good. It's 3 all, And that's the half-time score. And really, as the game has gone on, defences have dominated more and more and more on both sides of the ball. We've seen the Irish obviously tough it out, but uh, Southern Cal have been pretty solid as well. Both teams have been noted for their offensive thrust. And uh, in this game, uh, it's been a defensive battle between two, two teams that aren't known for their defence. So that's what's happening. Now then, what's been going on around the country? BYU, number two team, beat uh, Utah State 45-10. That, I suppose, we could have predicted. Ty Detmer, another big night for him. Syracuse trailing Miami at halftime, 23-0. Miami just don't lose in the Orange Bowl, and uh, they're not going to lose tonight unless there's something sensational happens in the second half. Texas, number four, they're tough. They're uh, still holding chances of winning a national championship. They could play Miami in the Cotton Bowl, and uh, they did their, their fortunes no harm with that win over Baylor. Texas A&M uh, beat the Texas Christian, 56-10, and... Uh, they're sort of still down the rankings. The final there in the All-Arizona game, and it's uh, the Sun Devils have won it with a field goal. They'll uh, be pleased about that one. Penn State could break into the top ten after that win over Pittsburgh. A bit surprising that Pittsburgh ran up that close, but uh, they're obviously regrouping. Here's a couple of perennial losers. Wake Forest coming out on top of this one, but a long time since either of those guys had a winning season. And uh, Arkansas beat SMU. Southern Methodist really in disarray. Forrest Gregg no longer coaching there now. He's just the athletic director. And Tennessee have beaten Kentucky 42-28. We can uh, predict that one. That one we didn't predict. Minnesota have improved enormously this season. And Iowa, just two weeks ago, were looking at Rose Bowl certainty. And not anymore. 
And uh, talking about sliding, Virginia are in free fall from number one to number 17. They'll probably be out of there altogether now after that huge defeat against Virginia Tech and Michigan. Well, they still tick away there, but uh, three defeats for Michigan. And uh, they beat Ohio State. Michigan State, again, another win, a narrow one against Wisconsin. 49 there, still knocking on the door. Temple beat Boston College. A um, bit of a surprise there. Boston College looked tough for about a half against Miami. Indiana, well, they've had an up-and-down season as well, but uh, if you can't beat Purdue, you're in trouble. And uh, they beat on 28-14. Mississippi beat Mississippi State 21-9. Mississippi had a useful season. They'd expect to beat State, and indeed they have. Illinois, another one of those up-and-down teams, and they had to fight hard against Northwestern, another one of those teams that haven't had a winning season for a while. Louisiana State, 6 Two lane 10, that's at the half. And uh, that's what's happened so far. And this game is tied up at 3 all. The University of Salem, Southern California opened up the scoring with that field goal. Notre Dame replied in kind. So here at the Los Angeles Coliseum, it's 3 all. We're going to take another short break. We'll be right back in just a couple of moments. Screens to the Los Angeles Coliseum. Site of the Olympics a few years ago. And the score here, nothing too Olympian here. It's three all between University of Southern California and Notre Dame. Now then, injuries are very much a feature of American football. And when we were over in Notre Dame earlier in the season, we had a look round the treatment room in the company of Christine Carmine. Well, we're in the sports injury department now where the injured athletes will come in for a bit of medical attention. And uh, with me is Christine Carmine, who's the assistant athletic trainer here at Notre Dame. Christine, what are all these uh, instruments of torture we've got? This is where we do our sports medicine rehab in this room, where we take um, post-surgical athletes or athletes that have been injured on the field and we rehabilitate them so that they go back to play. And the guy uh, who's sitting in the electric chair over there, what's that uh, instrument? That's our Cybex Orthotron, where we do our knee rehabilitation. That will rebuild the musculature about the knee while they're waiting to get back in the game. Are knee injuries commonplace among footballers? Yes, very. Also, um, ankle injuries, too. Well, we uh, have encountered uh, a few ice cubes here, Christine. Yeah, um, this is where our athletes will come in and get um, cryotherapy or the use of ice after uh, game time or after practice to reduce swelling. Um, if they have just aching sore muscles, they can also use the ice for that. You get unpacked in ice pretty quickly, do you? Um, as soon as possible. Right. Of course, over here we've got uh, an right. injured this, athlete. This is an ice bath where we'll have them put their ankles or their hands, extremities and whatnot to decrease inflammation. And that can be before or after practice. Right, now this is more my kind of temperature. A good old Californian hot tub we got here. <laughs> this is where we'll put our athletes before practice, um, if they have muscular soreness or an older injury, uh, what we call a subacute or chronic injury. That'll help loosen them up, uh, make the muscle more pliable so they're unlikely to tear it. So you really do have to use a combination of, of, of heat and cold, don't you? Yeah, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. It's an um, important part to mix between the two. Well, we've had the heat treatment and we've had the ice packs and uh, this is where they come to relax, right? This is um, our electrotherapy room where we'll do ultrasound, um, electrical stimulation and other types of manual therapy um, to the athletes before or after practice, depending on the injury. I is there any sort of average length of time that an athlete, an injured athlete would spend in this room? Oh, uh, it all depends on the injury and, um, you know, what we thought would be protocol for that. Now, your job isn't just about treatment of injuries, of course. It's also about prevention, isn't it? That's right. This is the room where we'll tape ankles for ankle instabilities or wrists or whatnot um, to prevent an injury, and that's our prime purpose. You know, we don't want everyone to get hurt and then take care of the problem. We want to do it beforehand. Now, you've got 100, 120 guys on the football team. I mean, there must be a, an awful lot of time spent in this room. Yeah, this is complete pandemonium before practice and after in here because um, we'll also clean a lot of injuries, um, bumps and bruises, turf burns and what have you. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty full in here each day. We were, see a, about 80 athletes a day from the football team alone in here, I think. Those guys must get through a few miles of tape in a season as well. Oh, a great amount, great amount. Well, Christine, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. And, of course, quite a few of the players this season have spent a bit of time in there, including the Rocket, just this week. But, uh, really, uh, medicine, sports medicine has just progressed in leaps and bounds over the last decade or so, hasn't it? Yes, and it's uh, made the playing time of the players much longer because they can then get in and get treated and, uh, and be much healthier quicker. And, of course, Chris Zorich was uh, obviously one of the men in there as well. He had that problem with his kneecap. 
but uh, he looks pretty well recovered now. Now then, competition time. Fancy winning some Miami Hurricanes and Notre Dame goodies? Well, this is a selection of some of the stuff that you can win if you can answer a couple of straightforward questions. Question number one, who beat Miami in their opening game of the 1990 season? You must remember it. We're going to give you a choice of three teams to choose from. Was it Penn State? Was it Kansas? Kansas? Or was it Brigham Young? Penn State, Kansas, or Brigham Young are your choices. One, two, and three. And question number two. Now, which current Notre Dame player is nicknamed the Rocket? Tricky one, this one. Wayne struggled on this one. Which current player is nicknamed the Rocket? Ricky Waters, Frankie Bismail, or Rodney Culver? If you think you know the answers, send them in on a postcard with your name and address and send them to Screen Sports, American Football Competition number two, PO Box 4TA, London W1V 4TA. Make sure your entries get here by December the 21st. And we'll be making our draw during our New Year's Day live bowl games coverage. So uh, best of luck with that. And uh, make sure you get them in by December the 21st. We're going to take another short break now. We'll be back with the second half in just a couple of moments. Join us again soon. And welcome back to Los Angeles. Just a reminder of the score in case you've just joined us. It's the University of Southern California 3. Notre Dame, three. Everybody predicted a high-scoring game. My colleague here, Wayne Hartman, said the Rocket would score twice. And uh, it's just not happened first half, has it? Well, I think Myers will be in the, in the uh, change room uh, talking to uh, his offensive unit and uh, with the coordinator and talking up uh, where they let themselves down, much the same as Brighton's quarterback does, and, and motivates it for the second half. And you can bet your bottom dollar you'll see some fireworks in the second half. Rocket has been just about there by but one tackle or one grab. Uh, Brooks and uh, and Culver the same and I, I, I'm still saying that the Rocket will score two touchdowns and you'll see some fireworks in this second half Nick. Well it, uh, it surely must come because both these offenses can put points on the board as we know. What do you think of uh, what you've seen of Southern Cal so far? Uh, Cal looked very impressive on the uh, on the first uh, drive and uh, and I, I thought this was going to be a real high scoring game but defenses just plugged themselves into what was happening and shut down all the action. Now, of course, a feature of Notre Dame games this year has been that there's been a lot of points put on the board in the fourth quarter. Last week, USC put on a lot of points, and so did their rivals, UCLA. But those two teams both went wild in the fourth quarter as well. Do you think we might see that happening this time around? Oh, it's certainly it's certainly on the cards to happen because no points have been put on so far. And if the, if what we say is going to happen, it's going to be a high-scoring game. It's going to come in the second half. But I'm surprised that it wasn't a, a, a more evenly uh, contested uh, uh, contest in the first half between offense and defense because both teams are known for sloppiness or giving up a lot on their secondary uh, and it didn't happen here uh, on defense and offensively they've just been non-entities. Well, games like this so often are decided on fumbles there's just been all turnovers there's been the one fumble so far when uh, poor old Rodney Culver coughed it up and Stefan Pace recovered do you think that might have a factor in the game? Uh, yes um, unfortunately Culver's had a habit of doing this and that's why we see Bettis uh, in uh, replacing him uh, I, I think that uh, that, uh, that whoever fumbles next is going to be in serious trouble because it's a very, very even game and they can't afford turnovers. And of course we saw Lou Holtz really chewing out Culver on the sideline, which is not something you see often in game time, is it? He must have been very, very angry indeed. Yes, it, it's, I, I think it was a bad mistake uh, on Culver and he's, he's unfortunately adopted this habit of uh, being, uh, have the disease of fumbleitis. He's a, good, he's a good back, but he needs to uh, hang on to the ball. Yes, that's for sure. We see Rocket back there waiting to get the ball. That's when I think fireworks will happen. I see him coming in a much, much more into the game, and this is where they're going to win by stretching their defense for the deep threat of, of the deep threat of Rocket Ismail, and then breaking the game wide open by using their different receivers. Well, he's been close a couple of times, just been tripped up at the last minute. I wonder what the Rocket has got in store for us here in the second half in Los Angeles. will get it, 19 yard line. And he's brought down across the 30. Boy, excellent coverage so far on the special teams for USC. First There's half stats, back. Trojans with 10 first downs. Notre Dame made a good comeback there. At one time, they were nine first downs to two. So in the second quarter, Notre Dame came back with 97 yards rushing. 171 total yards, a little edge for Notre Dame there. And that one turnover. I think the rushing yard's a positive for Notre Dame. Tony Brooks, the tailback, gets the handoff. 
Brooks trying to get outside, and he's brought down after gaining only two yards. And that was Marcus Hopkins, the strong safety, that made the play. So Brooks at the tailback spot. Waters has not played since the personal foul penalty he committed in the first half. QB comparison, we see Rick Meyer, five out of 10 for 74 yards. And the Irish with second down and eight at the Notre Dame 33. Culver in front of Brooks. And a play fake. Wide open in the flat, misty. Meyer puts the ball down and he'll lose yardage. Could not get outside and Mike Hines, the nose tackle, is the man that finally brought him down. Meyer had a lot of room outside, but he couldn't get out there. I tell you, he had Derrick Brown to his left, wide open, and he missed him. Big tight end, it drifted out to the left flat, was wide open. And the play comes in with Ismail. And it's third and nine now at the 32 for Notre Dame. Ismail right, Lake Dawson left. Meyer rolling right. Dumps it a deep for Rocket and way overthrown. Calvin Holmes back there in good coverage. Good Whoa. coverage. In fact, the Rocket had the perfect coverage for him, but it was just good coverage by Calvin Holmes. We seem uh, pretty elated there. He covered Rocket man to man here. Now what? Here goes the out move, and it was an out and deep. Just a flat pattern. Square out and down. Calvin Holmes right there. Good coverage. And so that brings uh, Notre Dame into a punt situation. Scott Lockwood, the deep back. And Hendrick blasts a beauty out of there. Lockwood. And he's brought down at the 25-yard line. Andre Jones down on special teams makes the tackle. So early in the third quarter, we're tied at three. We pause now for a regional break. firing on all cylinders at all tonight. Let's have a look at that third down play, which I thought was a strange call. Yes, it was fairly predictable that they were trying to uh, get Rocket into the game here, and it was an out and up. And uh, I think if he'd have thrown early, Rocket was wide open, but he overthrew him and uh, threw him when the coverage was good. That's twice we've seen the Rocket overthrown, and twice he's been covered very tight as well. They, you know, I think they're trying to get miracles out of the guy, aren't they? Yes, and they've got to throw to him when he, he's likely to be open. I mean, when he makes his out and up, that's when he's going to be open, not when he's 30 yards down the field. Uh, and again, I think it's strange calling. Yes, indeed. And that defensive back has done a very good job as well so far for Southern California. That's Calvin Holmes, the junior. He's been twice in coverage and twice he's come up with the goods. It's the Olympic flame here in Los Angeles. Just uh, most of the second half still to go. 13, 18 left. And um, really, Notre Dame's offense for a lot of the second half of the season has, has just been a little bit off kilter, hasn't it? Yes, uh, it's strange uh, as a team that uh, depends so rapidly and, and uh, importantly on, on their, uh, their all-firing offense that uh, just they're not doing it today. So now it's Southern Cal's chance to try and break this three-all deadlock. That's the first time in the game they gave it to the fullback and Demetrius DuBose brings Scott Lockwood down right in his tracks. USC had to replace a very fine fullback this year, Leroy Holt. In turn, a much smaller man in Lockwood, who's done a good job blocking against bigger people. But he's not that ramming fullback that you'd like for inside running. So now 41 Lockwood was out into a slot position. Second and nine for the 27. Marinovich floats it out to Lockwood, and Greg Davis, nice job. Held it down, stopped him in his tracks. In a very tackle. short game. You heard the leather pop. Greg Davis, Greg Davis on the hit. Well, Lockwood out of Boulder, Colorado, out to the 32, and USC will have third down and four. Stone Gregor looking over the sideline. Gary. Darnell, the defensive coordinator, he's sending in the defensive alignment every play. Irish getting their defense set, four down. Double wing, and he'll go in for Gary Rock. Trying to get a man-to-man -man right there on 
Well, Gray Jones guarding Wellman. Flags are down. Wellman, no, it's not Wellman. It's Hannah, Travis Hannah, who goes across midfield. But a flag is down on the play. Andre Jones ran him out of bounds. Penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Flag was thrown at the line of scrimmage, which usually means it's on the offense. And everybody's walking back. Going to Outside. Get a first down here. Defense. 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 Wow. They're going to take first the down. play, of course. So much for that theory. Notre Dame offside, so the pass to Travis Hanna is good for a first down across midfield. I confuse the players. Everybody else is walking back. The Trojans have 11 first downs. Teams are even now in that category. USC's now five out of nine on third downs, better than 50%. Fake. And that one dropped. Ball thrown low, and Larry Wallace could not handle it with Willie Clark on the coverage. Marinovich worked on two things a lot in this offseason. Paul, he worked on throwing the ball deep. We haven't seen that yet. He worked also on his play fakes, ball fakes. He looks much more adept at that. A this lot year. better this year. Exactly. He's got a nice size, six three. Good touch on the football. 12 out of 18 now for 134. Marinovich. Gary Darnell over the sidelines. Second down and 10. Roger, Roger. Here comes a blitz with Jones. Pass out here is caught by Hannah in front of Todd Light, 42-yard line. That's going to be a seven-yard gain and leave USC with third and three. Brought Andre Jones in there against Brinovich, but he had a long way to go. Brinovich got the ball off quickly. Now, very important third down come out defensively for ball Notre Dame. 42. They can stop him here and hold him far from the first down. They're going to force him to punt right here. Anything uh, after this first down now, they're almost in four down territory. Third and three. USC at the Irish 42. Another blitz, and that ball floated out to Lockwood, and he's going to be down inside the 30, or right at the 30. I'll tell you, this kid does a lot for this offense, Lockwood. He's a good blocker, he blocks for the run, and of course he slips outside in the flat. He picks up 12 here. He's got good hands, and watch this move. Now, he's the remaining back there. He's in a three-point stance. They're gonna roll out to the right. There's Marinovich. Now, watch this nice, easy touch over the linebacker over Kowalkowski, right down the sidelines for a 12-yard pickup. And a big block there, Royster, the tailback, was the man who picked up Stonebreaker on the blitz. And gave Marinovich the chance to throw it. First down now at the Irish 30. And they give it to Royster, and he is gonna be brought down at the line. Boy, he drives hard, now he keeps those legs driving. Good play by the Irish defense there to stop Royster on the first down run. The Coliseum in Los Angeles every other year. It's the season ending home for the Irish. I just remember so many great games here. Joe Theismann on a rainy, muddy night. The valiant effort trying to pull Notre Dame to victory. Eric Parsegian had a lot of heartbreak in this stadium. Greg Furtick to Rod Sherman, 1964. Lost Notre Dame a national championship. And then is to Wellman. Steps around Todd Light, gets a first down inside the 20. Well, Wellman down to the 17. He's a tough work competitor, Gary Wellman. Made the move for the first down. That's the sixth catch in the game for Wellman. Another 12-yard pickup. There's Davis and Todd Light, moving too far too deep here to really get the coverage on that little out move. They had him inside and out with Davis and Light. You saw in that replay a lot of chunks of turf coming up. This notoriously is a tough field to play on. Not a lot of grass usually. A lot of loose turf. Here's Stonebreaker coming again. He's picked up. And Marinovich to the end zone as Wellman just overthrew him. Greg Davis had to pick up Wellman, and he just missed connecting. 
Got to take a break. He's really out yeah, of breath. He is. He's winded from running all around the field. So it'll be second and 10 at the 17. 10 and a half to play third quarter, three all. USC got to the five yard line. Notre Dame in the first quarter, first possession had to settle for a field goal. Shotgun, blitz coming again, and a quick throw is caught, but a good tackle by Greg Davis stops that play to Johnny Morton for a very short game. And you know, I so think, I think it, uh, when they blitz, it forced the defensive secondary to cover a little tighter. They get a little bit better coverage, uh, it seems like, when they blitz, because Davis, on that occasion, you know, he knows he's got that man, man to man, so you better not, you know, let him have a four or five yard run in a free zone. So now it is third and eight of the 15. This is what knocked Weldon out of the game, landing hard on his right side. Third and eight, USC, Notre Dame 15. Shotgun. Underneath throw to Lockwood. Good tackle by Todd Light at the 13. Stops that play for just two yards. And will force USC to try for three. Twelfth play of this drive, USC took about five to six minutes off that clock. Quinn Rodriguez, the all-time leading place kicker in Southern Cal history. Both field goals and total points. Four-year kicker. And this will be a short one. 31-yarder. At O'Hara is the holder for the left footer. And Rodriguez is perfect. So USC takes the lead back. It's nine minutes and nine seconds to play in the third quarter. 31-yard field goal gives USC the lead, six to three. Southern California have doubled their lead. It's now 6-3 following Quinn Rodriguez's second field goal of the night. This one, a 31-yarder. Here's the key play. Yes, here we see Lockwood come out of the backfield. And quarterback lays the ball nicely over the linebackers. He picks up a good 12 yards here. And Lockwood is one of their leading rushers and not known for his pass reception, uh, but made a good catch there. Certainly a good uh, play selection there from coach Larry Smith. He found a player that they wouldn't have expected to see in a passing situation and uh, exploited the the uh, error as a result from Notre Dame. Yes, and it was an excellent block from the normal uh, normal running back who uh, carries most of their uh, their balls for them and who made an excellent block to spring uh, loose. Uh, that's a Mario uh, Royster who made the play happen. Well, let's see what the Rocket can do in reply. Notre Dame trail now by the score of 6-3, to three, and we're roughly midway through the third quarter, and we're still waiting for that first touchdown. This one, this one might give Ismail a better chance for the 12-yard line. And just across the 30, he's brought down. Not too far, boy, I'll tell you, not too far from breaking free. So Notre Dame starts at the 31, and they... Well, you haven't seen too many plays yet where they've thrown the ball on first down. Now, you watch USC's defense, Ted. They will, their linebackers will be a little more tight. Of course, they're out of the eye here. Most likely, they run the football. And Waters is in the game as the tailback. Good cutback by Waters, and he's out to the 38-yard line. So Waters' first carry in quite a while gets him out near the 40-yard line. And Ismail was in on that play as well as a wide receiver. Notre Dame playing in a situation where they may need to make sure that their better offensive weapons get the football now. Second half, tight game. Waters that time, no, good play by McDaniels on the defensive front for Southern Cal, and that's a no-game play. So the Irish will have third down in short yardage, third and two. How many times you see that horse? <laughs> well, let's see. My two years here, we uh, 
we gave up about 80 points. So that horse almost died <laughs> when I played here. He was running up and down. I know he lost about 300 pounds. Third and two. And Rodney Culver, good drive by the right side of the Notre Dame offensive line, and Culver gets a first down. That was excellent drive by Ryan, by Gene McGuire, by Mike Help. Tim Ryan and Mike Help playing their last regular season Notre Dame game here tonight. They're going to be tough to replace in that middle of the Notre Dame offensive line. they got to start asserting themselves up front now. they got to start controlling the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame here uh, uh, in jeopardy, you know, with the three point, you're behind by three, another score, and it really puts you in jeopardy. Option, Waters juggles, holds on, but lost his momentum trying to gain the pitch, and he's out at the 45. Right out of bounds by Kurt Barber. So that option gains just two, and Notre Dame will have second down and eight. Option, would you guess, Paul, they are using that more to keep the defense honest? That's exactly. Really, uh, he has confidence in Rick Meyer running the football, but we haven't seen too many occasions where he, he looked quick. Here comes the option pass. All kinds of time. Oh, Tony Smith had it, and it skidded through his hands at the 10-yard line as he played off Marcus Hopkins, who really didn't have much of an idea where the ball was. And it was right there, but Smith could not catch it. And it will be third down and long yardage, third and seven. I tell you, Notre Dame's passing in this game has been down the field. I mean, a lot of long passes. Major difference between Notre Dame's pass offense and Southern Cal's. Exactly. They have a lot of more routes. It seems as if uh, Notre Dame is trying to rely on the bomb. Throwing the bomb. Now, I've, I've always felt you should throw three or four bombs to the rock at every day. You know, with this great speed. But you're looking at Rick Meyer, who's not having too good a football game right now. He's five out of 12 for only 74 yards. Meanwhile, the officials stop play here, so the Notre Dame training staff can come out and talk with Mike Hilt. I think Mike Hilt's telling everybody he's all right. Mike Health, though, because the play was stopped for the medical staff to look at it, Mike Health has to come out for one play. And Tim Ruddy, the freshman center, has been so impressive at times for Notre Dame this year, will come in and play center on this down. Third and seven, staring the Irish here. From their own 46, 7.27 to go, third quarter, 6-3 USC. This male wide left, the wide side, and he's alone out there. Blitz. Blitz, picked up once, twice. Good catch by Derek Brown. First down at the 40 of Southern Cal, and that was a big time throw by Meyer because uh, he got smacked after throwing it. A lot of poise right under, a lot of pressure here for Rick Meyer. Here come off play action. He's going to hit Derek Brown coming across. There it is. He's coming across from his tight end position. That's his third catch. There he stepped out of bounds with his left. Picked up 15 yards before he stepped out of bounds. There he's lined up on the left. Here comes the blitz. And Rodney Culver just couldn't get back. And I tell you, it was a great pitch by Rick Meyer to get the ball in. Option Waters got some room. And Waters. Near the USC 25. First down, Notre Dame. Good pitch this time by Rick Meyer. Another 15 yard pickup. And that is what Notre Dame would like to do get that option quick pitch and use their speed. Use their speed. Let, let Waters and let the rocket or somebody try to get outside. Brooks. Waters has 38 yards and nine carries tonight. They'll run it now. Culver in front of Waters in the eye. This time Waters going right. Cuts back inside the 20. Stefan Pace makes the tackle out of the secondary. And Notre Dame now charging back on that big third down pass to Derek Brown, the key. Starting to, ball. Pick up, starting to pick up five, six, and seven yards on that first down, and that really that, that puts a lot of the 
takes a lot of the guesswork out offensively for Notre Dame. You know what Holtz is going to do when he's got second and three. You know, he's going to stick it down your throat. Mike Helt back in as the center. Yeah, but USC very wisely, they got everybody up on the line of scrimmage. And Waters, nice job again running that sweep. Waited, waited, then cut back against the flow and gets the first down. And they're just doing a good job of blocking now because when it's second three, just like I say, they know Notre Dame's going to run the football. What they're doing is they're bringing both the line inside linebackers on a blitz every time. A lot of Notre Dame fans. They're somewhere in this vast Coliseum. Large alumni group in Southern California. They're all here. Now watch the key the linebackers here. Boy, they react quickly. Here they come. See them? Waters again to the nine. Here's where I'm sure and Scott Ross in on the tackle. This is where I think it's very important for Notre Dame to establish the end zone, to put the ball into the end zone, to take the lead. And I think a lot of Waters now saying, I need a break. The psychological edge of being in the end zone, the first team in there. So we're down now to five and a half to play third quarter. Watch the linebackers here for USC. They will come up closer. Look at him there. Uh, the outside linebackers says, come on, come on up. Two tight ends. Culver, Culver inside the five, and he's near a first down. And Meyer changed that play. Reading the defense and gave it to the fullback. You know, I said about three minutes ago, they got to start asserting himself offensively, though. I'm talking about the offensive line, and boy, have they done that this series. They have really blocked well in the last five or six plays. They've really pushed a blitzing USC defense back. Uh, they really handled their blocking chores, especially at the point of attack. Sticks being called out to measure. I think that this is first down yardage, but we are so far away that it's only a guess. 508 to go third quarter, six to three, USC the lead. Oh, we didn't get it. Wow. Well, you can see they're a good foot to foot and a half short. And it will be third down coming up. The Orange Bowl representatives are here at the Coliseum. They'll be officially extending Notre Dame there invitation following the game. USC's headed to El Paso on New Year's Eve to play in the John Hancock Bowl. It used to be called the Sun yeah. Bowl. When are they going to straighten out all this bowl situation and just, you know, wait? Just make it a rule. They got to they gotta make it a rule. You can't give out the bowl bid until X day. Really straighten all this up. Third down here, third to foot. Two tight ends. Culver in front of Brooks. Meyer keeps it. That'll be a first down. He looks like he's down near the two-yard line. Well, you know what I think, Paul? I, I just think the teams ought to schedule a bowl games now the way they do the rest of the schedule. Schedule <laughs> six, seven years in advance so that next year you could open up your Notre Dame media guide and rate that the 1997 Fiesta Bowl. Notre Dame's already scheduled. Well, so that's a, why not? that might be a thought to ponder, direction. but that'll never happen. You know that. Yeah. Uh, People have been blaming the bowls, though, and it's not just the bowls' fault. The schools and the conferences have been as much to blame. First and goal here at the two. Waters nope. stacked up in the middle. Waters has eight touchdowns this year. Big 98 getting up there. Don Gibson, 92, will be getting up from the bottom, and he was the man who really helped stand up that middle of the USC defensive line. They didn't get anything on first half. Well, you got a cutback runner like Waters. You know, it puts so much pressure on the defense. You get him out wide, he's got that cutback ability, and he'll get in. Notre Dame is almost ex exclusively an up-the-middle team or between-the-tackles team inside the five. Not with those linebackers blitzing. No Palmer way. You got to go outside. Culver didn't get in. Kurt Barber, first hit. That's at the one-yard line now, or at least close to it. And it will be third down. Those two inside linebackers are keying the up back. Rodney Culver there. Oh, 
is the is the outside there? Well, it was the first couple of plays. Now, of course, third down. And let's see if Blue Hole stays on the inside with Rodney Colbert. All right, give it the pitch. Here we got the rocket comes in. He'll be lined up at left to the left halfback position. They're leaning towards the left though. Third down a yard. Myers in trouble. Pitch to Brooks. Flag down. Touchdown Notre Dame. But a flag is down. And that could really be hurtful. And it is offside Southern Cal. Touchdown Notre Dame. Tony Brooks got in on the very late pitch it, for Meyer. It, it didn't look good again. The option going down that Ooh. line of scrimmage. But he got it back to Brooks and speed on the outside. You see what that does. When you got a cutback runner, you got some speed out there. Even though if the guy's trying to make a tackle on it, usually you can break a tackle. Or even if you're tackled, you're going to get a yard or two for this and get in for the uh, touchdown. So Notre Dame now will try to add the 10th point, Craig Hendrick out of the hole of Jim Sexton. And Notre Dame goes 69 yards with Tony Brooks scoring the touchdown. And Hendrick continues to be perfect for the year in extra points. And Notre Dame leads for the first time as we pause now for a regional break. Well, first touchdown of the game. We've had to wait nearly three quarters. And I uh, have to say, Wayne, it uh, wasn't the rocket. No, so it wasn't the rocket, but they made some good play selections and they got the ball down the field very nicely. Here we see uh, Myers uh, on his fake back here and an excellent pass here over the middle to the old faithful Mr. Brown. And uh, he, he might have got a few more yards, just got his foot out of bounds there, but he's been playing excellent ball today. Well, look, they, uh, they didn't try and block him. They were coming after the quarterback and just didn't quite get him in time. Yes, a great poise by the quarterback to get the ball away here. Here we see the, the option here, and he throws the ball out wide, and an excellent cut back by Waters here, and makes a great play to make 12 yards and keeps the drive alive. And that was another first down, and then from here, watch out for Tony Brooks on the option. Yes, the old fit, defense was stunting there, and uh, Brooks uh, goes in. Those sort of plays you think is holding uh, on the line, but fortunately, it was a stunting defense that made them uh, be offside. And now you're seeing Notre Dame come back into their game form and start to control the ball and, and the clock. Well, they now lead by four points, of course, but we've seen plenty of times before that uh, the Fighting Irish never have a safe lead, do they? And four points is certainly not a safe lead. No, but they're starting to come into form and they're starting to get the diversity of their offense out there. And I still think, I keep saying it, Nick, I still think our friend is going to score a couple of touchdowns. Well, that drive needed Myra to come alive because he'd had a stinker, hadn't he, up till then, but uh, he really came good there. Yes, he certainly did. And that's right. He hasn't been having good stats. I think he's uh, uh, five for 12 or 13 uh, uh, passes and he's not looked effective. No, he certainly hasn't, but uh, he's a gutsy guy. He'll take his hits as well, like he did for the pass to Brown. But anyway, the Irish now with their noses in front for the first time. It's 10 to 6. Hendrick boots it beyond the end zone. It'll be a touchback to Southern Cal. They'll take over from their own 20-yard line with time running out here in the third quarter. Oh, one game he did. One game he had four or five. Oh, you're right, he had four against Air Force. Yeah. Marinovich is 17 out of 24 for 168 so far. And now with the Trojans trailing for the first time, we'll see if they start to air out the ball over. They really haven't gone down the field very much in their passing attack. But very effective underneath. Give it instead to Royster. And the tailback gains four. George Williams on the defensive line with a tackle. Long drive, 15 plays, 69 yards. Took off six minutes of that clock. That's just what Coach Holtz likes, isn't it? Control the pace of the 15 game. 15 plays. And there weren't many. I, I think that was the only, the only completed pass, I believe, was the one to Brown on the drive. Everything else was done on the ground. Second and six now, USC at their 24. 
Wellman in motion. Marinovich underneath to Royster. And that'll be a first down. This is across the 30. Donnie Graham and Andre Jones converge. Well, I like this control passing game at USC. Second five and go to that little hook pattern. Defensively, you've got to uh, get up on the coverage a lot tighter than that. Taylor, they can march right down the field on you, five and six yards of pop. Notre Dame going with That's Devon Rogers. McDonald. And Don Grimmett linebackers on this series, replacing Cole, Kowski, and DuBose. And USC has first down. To Royster. Good. Cross is Zorich, and he brings Royster down. I tell you, he's, he's, he's got that knee. He's, he's on a favorite. There's no question about that. But what a quick move by Chris Zorich to make that. He actually took a step to his left. Watch it. He goes over to the left. He gets around the block. Now watch the pursuit down the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's quick. Remember, this is an injury that some thought would keep Zorich out for the year. He only missed one game. Unreal. That's about the first time we've seen the old Zorich Exactly. Quickness since the injury. Second and eight, a minute 25 to go. Third quarter. Royster again. No, that's Zorich again. And USC will have third and long when we come back. Third quarter winding down. Notre Dame leading 10 to 6. Well, now the defense doing the job for Notre Dame, and they really have. Um, more and more as the game's gone on, shut down the offense of the Trojans. But let's just take another look before we talk about the defense at Tony Brooks's one-yard run. Here we saw it was the nose tackle that was Los offside Angeles, there. Myers just about Darnell. got uh, a sack there, but he got the ball out to uh, Brooks just in time to turn it upfield and get a touchdown there. And now we're back live, third and eight for USC. Three-man rush. Get to Marinovich. He's down on the play, and it was Zorich who made three plays in a row. Uno, two, three. Look at him. Is that a hat trick? Emotional, I tell you. It's a hat trick for the big nose tackle, All American, of course. I tell you. Two solo tackles and then a sack, and USC is forced to punt. Be some interesting, a lot of attention, of course, on the Heisman this year, but Notre Dame will be watching the Outland and Lombardi votes as well. That's right. How about the Jim Tharp for Todd Hall? Ron Dale punting it. Ismail will catch it at the 30, and he was hit right there. No chance to get going. Good punt, good coverage by Southern Cal. And that punt ends the third quarter. But Notre Dame will start the fourth quarter with the ball and the lead for the first time in the game. They've had both 10-6 Notre Dame in the fourth quarter after this. Just awaiting the start of the fourth quarter. Confirmation that Notre Dame now lead 10-6. The first time they've been ahead in the game. Wayne, we were talking earlier about Notre Dame's defense really starting to do more and more of a number on USC. You haven't really threatened after that big opening drive. Yes, uh, that's what's... Uh held Notre Dame in this game, and Zorich must be coming back strong now because three plays in a row, Zorich has made great impact plays, and he got the quarterback finally for a uh, sack. Well, just a reminder now of our competition address. Remember, we ran a competition at halftime. Make sure your entries are into this address. That's Screen Sport American Football Competition, the number two, PO Box 4TA, London W1V. 4TA, make sure it's on a postcard with your name and address and the two correct answers. Make sure they're here also by December the 21st. So, uh, yeah, Zorich, and uh, just, a, just a marvelous uh, series there in on every single play. And uh, that's the Chris Zorich we know and love, isn't it? Yes, and it's so nice to see a guy come back after being injured, not thinking he's going to play, and now he's got himself back in. And that's why that new uh, uh, physiotherapist uh, was discussing uh, uh, with you, Nick, uh, when we were out there, how important it is to have all these new techniques to get players back in the game fit and healthy and know what's the matter with him. That's right. They said he was out for the season. He just missed one game and he's back right in the thick of it. Now the Irish have the ball on their own 30. Could be an interesting drive coming up. 
Dennis Lanius, J Jamie Faust, Suzanne LaCroix, and Paul Borowski, part of our crew that's been with you all year, week in and week out, uh, Notre Dame football. Waters and Culver now the backfield, second and five. If Notre Dame could pull out a replica of the last drive, they'd be sitting pretty. That's exactly what Lou would like. Keep it on the ground, take the, take it off. Waters, whoa, an official went down. Waters went down, and he's going to be just inches shy of the first down at the 40-yard line. Marcus Hopkins made the hit. Now yeah, Notre Dame trying to uh, starting to assert themselves running the football. Look at that, 152 yards rushing in three quarters. Just the opposite on the passing uh, with USC, the big edge there. So the Irish have third and inches here. They just barely have to cross the 40-yard line. Yeah, you see quarterback sneak. Waters is 57 yards and 14 carries. Right over the right guard is a little hole. You'll see the quarterback. There it goes. Oh, I don't know. That's going to be close. Meyer again didn't get very much. He went right up Mike Helt's back. And they're going to have to probably give it a first down. I'll let them go measure. See, that's three running plays, right? That took about a minute and a half off that clock. And that's the way Lou Holtz is uh, milking that four point lead now. But he knows there's only one score in front is exactly. nothing safe. He holds no, the they would two love scores. To, love to uh, make a good sustained drive here, take about six minutes off and get some points on the board. Reverse to the rocket. Look at the room! All the way down to the 28 of USC. And then a late flag comes flying in again. 32-yard pickup for the Rocket, who has a 140 yards now, all-purpose yardage. Well, that's just a silly. I'll tell you what, there was a bad flag thrown there. Notre Dame's going to get 15 tack back on the run at the end of the run, and that was a useless flag. And Lou wants an ex explanation of this. Well, that's... The one on Ricky Waters was a good call. That one I don't believe was a good call. It was a, it was a hit at the end of the play, but you know that was a meaningless push and a shove. It didn't have any effect on harming anything. Let's take a look. There he is, number 87, right here. Here it comes. It's Lake Dawson. What? Uh, no, that's not a penalty. They called a penalty, penalty there. That's what they call it. Come on. That was just that was a bad call. First and 25. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the point is that these are not men, these are not men in skirts playing this game. It's a physical game, and that was nothing more than a little two-handed push at the end of a play. That, that was terrible. I don't blame you, don't Lou. Don't blame him at all. My heavens! Whether the ball's Let him play. Not, that was not that was not a good call. So it's first and 25 because the ball was dead. So it's first and 25 at the USC 43. Myers got the ball, does to the rocket. Here he goes again. Ismail off. Inside the five, down to the USC two. With There's Calvin Holmes on the tackle. A little delay over the middle. They've used it three or four times this year. And almost every time he gets it, he almost breaks it. He had a 32-yard run on the reverse. Now he comes right back after the penalty. This time he picks up 41. So he's got 180 yards in all-purpose yards already tonight. And he hasn't touched the football that much. There it is. There's the delay. And boy, I tell you, when he's got that much room, he's dangerous. Now watch his cut right here. Boom, right here. Inside the five, and he almost got in. Full house. First and goal. Inside Waters. No, stopped up. And that was Don Gibson that made the first hit. Stopped that play. Waters. Got forward about a yard. 10 to 6 Notre Dame, and they're knocking on the door again with 12.45 to play. That's a great way to make that penalty yes, sir. mute. Throw the ball to the rocket. Second and goal at the one. Option. 
Oh, Meyer slipped and went down. No lose yards there. Wow, that's back to the almost the three-yard line. Big play defensively coming up for USC. If they can stop Notre Dame and force them to kick the field yeah. goal, you know, they're still within a touchdown and maybe a two-point conversion here. For Notre Dame, of course, big edge here if they can get in for six and, and up that lead to 11 points. Wow, that was a big, big now slip by Meyer. You need almost three yards here on third down. Sean Davis. No, Sean Davis is down, and this will be an interesting decision. It is and gonna Rick be Meyer a, wants to go. a full yard shy, and I would say Lou Holtz has to go. The field goal here doesn't do a whole lot for you. If you're thinking about winning the football game. Still 11.25 to play. I'd call the same play. Lou I'd Holtz pitch it a goal right wide with Waters. He wants to talk it over. Yeah, first thing they're gonna do is take a timeout. So it is 10-6 Notre Dame as we pause now for a regional break. Sports so Channel 6 then, but a uh, couple of bits of magic there from the rocket and the ball on the one-yard line, an interesting fourth down, and uh, he is unbelievable. It's just incredible. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, there was a touchdown all but a couple of yards, and uh, here we see the rocket on, a, on the... Uh, on the little dump pass over the side here. And this is where they want it. This is how they want to use them. Give them open field, make a pass reception, short yardage, and then open the field running by the rocket. It's just incredible play. What I like about him is his vision downfield. He doesn't just get the ball and run blindly. He's looking around. You see his moves. He's cutting back. He's looking for a seam. He's looking for a hole. He's a very intelligent runner with the ball, isn't he? Yes, and he's very economic as well because he wants... He, he's a typical north-south runner looking at what's going on. Well, just confirmation there, there that things going very much Miami's way in the Orange Bowl. That's no real surprise. 33 nothing now over Syracuse. That defense of Miami is tough. Very tough indeed. But uh, what would you do in this situation? You're leading by three, there's plenty of time, and you're on fourth down at the one. I'd definitely go for it. I would uh, I think that they're good enough to punch it in, and they need a yard here, and if they go full house uh, uh, offensive uh, uh, formation here, I can see them sweeping wide with Waters punching it in from, from the one-yard line. I thought you wanted the rocket to go. I'd like to see the Rock together. <laughs> I'd like to see my prediction come true. I'd rather see Notre Dame win. Yeah, I think they're going to as well. Certainly if they punch it in here, it's an awful long way back for USC. But uh, big play coming up, both sides of the ball. Fourth down and one. And uh, as they're in the huddle there, it looks like they may well be electing to go for it. Certainly a field goal wouldn't mean an awful lot. We'd give them a seven-point lead with uh, a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Southern Cal could actually overturn that. So uh, you think it's the right decision to go for it? If I, indeed they go for it? I think it's the right thing to go for it. And uh, I, I wouldn't be, as I say, I, I think it'll be a, uh, a sweep and, and it'll be a two-point touchdown. The play of the game coming up. that Brown was held in the end zone, but the Trojans hold. Watch Derrick Brown. He's lined up on the left of your screen here. There's a defender in a three-point stance right in front of me. Here's the fake. Oh, they were all over him. Well, they had contact, and he wants that flag thrown, too. Watch him now. There's 86. Now, here comes the ball right here. The guy's all over him. They're all over him. Wow. And that's not interference. Ball's in the air. Wow. He's being nudged. Got away with one there. And the Trojans stay alive with a huge stop. And now they start from their one-yard line, first and goal. Marinovich throws it out. That's the tight end catching his first pass. Bob Crane, and he's out near the 10-yard line. Well, uh, Notre Dame knocking on the door, about to go up. Yep. But it didn't fool anybody. You know, that play has got to be carried out with a much better fake to the fullback. Wasn't a good fake of the running play. It didn't fool the linebacker. Mm -hmm. He got clogged up trying to get to the middle, even though uh, a lot of people may say there might have, should have been a flag throw. Second and one. And flags are thrown as the play starts. 
Stonebreaker lined up right over center. I tell you, win or lose defensively, Notre Dame has really played well. You know, they really have played well today. I mean, they've only <laughs> they've kept one of the highest scoring teams in the West Coast here with just two field goals. So the five yard penalty makes it second and six now from the five yard line. You just hate to see that guy with the football and your team only with a four point lead. That's what that was such a damaging stop there for Notre Dame. Marinovich to Wellman, that'll be a first down. To the 15, 16 yard line and a USC first down. There he is, Gary Wellman. Well, I tell you, he's a great little competitor. His seventh catch tonight, he's got 80 yards. Well, I tell you, it takes a lot of guts. He just, Larry Smith sends that offense in there and they got confidence and, and poise under pressure. He just comes right out of the end zone throwing the football and they make the first down. I think that's what you gain watching from watching Notre Dame on film this year. Everybody's thrown the ball on him. Oh, my. Wellman had his back turned, and if that... <laughs> it's a good thing that was a poor Ooh. pass. If that was on target, six points. Would have For been Greg intercept. Davis, yeah. Exactly. Wow. That, you would not suspect, happens very often. Marinovich has only thrown nine interceptions this year, and this game... Here we are in the fourth quarter, Paul, and it's been like so many Notre Dame games this year. There have been no USC turnovers. None. We're in a miss 20 out of 28. The 196 yards. Second and 10 at the 16. Three-man rush. You'll have time here. Now he lobs one out. Oh, boy. The fingertips of Wellman across the 35. Well, that was a tough catch. He should have had it, though. Hit him right in the hands. And Rod Smith. Then on the reflection. On the then on the reflection, uh, deflection. Rod Smith looked like had a shot at it. Well, I tell you, Wellman's going to lose about 500 pounds like that horse tonight, sure. the way he's running down the field. Well, he needs 25 yards to get over 1,000 yards. Nobody in the history of USC has caught passes for 1,000 yards. In one seat. Watching Wellman, doesn't he remind you a little bit of J.K. McKay? He really does. He really does, doesn't he? Third and ten now, USC at the 16. Three-man rush. You'll have time. He has all kinds of time. And now throws a strike, and that'll be a first down to Larry Wallace at the 37-yard line. I don't understand it. Notre Dame's gone to the three-man rush again. We haven't seen it all game long. And when they go in there, they can never get to the quarterback with the three-man rush. Never. Oh, he's going to have time. That's 21-yard pickup. My heavens, anybody's going to get open. You can't cover a man that long. He just keeps on running. And Willie Clark had him covered there for a while. You put pressure on the quarterback, that would have been an incompletion, say. You, you cannot rush three men against a quarterback like this. He'll eat your lunch. First down, USC at their 37. And now, that's fumbled, loose football. It's picked up by Scott Lockwood, and he is brought down at the 26-yard line. The play will you lose 11 yards, but USC for them stays alive by recovering the fumbled handoff. We got an ISO on Stoney here. He's coming up on the blitz. Well, he played off two blocks, and he messed this play up right here. Oh, I tell you, they're lucky uh, Notre Dame doesn't get the football here. Stoney didn't know where it was. He knew he caused a fumble. That Lockwood's on the spot again, isn't he? What a big play. That's an 11-yard loss. Back to the 26-yard line. Now I got a four-man rush. And Marinovich there goes down. Scott Kowalkowski got him. You've got to have the four-man rush. Notre Dame cannot uh, stop the pass without at least four men going out. Do you, feel, Paul, do you feel strongly about that? Yes. <laughs> how, long, how many weeks we've been talking about this? Well. 
Let's see what they do now. Notre Dame, because you have third and 23. I swear to heaven, if I was a, especially a pro coach, you know, they, you talk about that prevent defense. I hate it. I would never. I watched Bud Grant, who I really had a lot of admiration for in the pros. He never went to a prevent defense in the uh, prevent defense that you're thinking about. You always rush five men on, the, on their prevent defense. Five down linemen went after the quarterback. Shotgun on third and 23. And the play is not run cleanly. Let's see. Well, I think they ran out of time. USC did not get the playoff in time, and that'll cost them five more. Head ball, delay a game, offense. Still third down. Boy, that'll, that'll anger you. That's a five-yard penalty for no reason. Now it's third and 28. How many will Notre Dame rush here? What's your guess? Four. I'm jumping out of the booth if they rush three. They will rush four. There's your time remaining. There's Third your four man. 28. There's your four man on down lineman, too. Here they come. And they all rush. And Jones gets in to force Marinovich out. Now he throws back against the grain to Wellman, and they're making a good stick. Right on the spot is Brian Radigan at the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth down, long yardage, and USC will have to punt. So the Trojans will be put to a punt situation with seven minutes to play, the clock running, and that man awaiting the ball. Huh. He, he returns this punt if he gets a great punt return. I, I, I just have a feeling that He's going to break one here. Boy, oh, what another a great He'll get him this great kid, check. This kid really punts it. Oh, now they're going to call this male down. That was an outstanding punt. That's the best punt maybe we've seen all year, given the circumstances. And Notre Dame pinned way back inside their 20. 62-yard punt. Whew. And that makes it. 6.39 to play. Notre Dame leading 10 to 6. Welcome back. Halfway through the fourth quarter here. Let's just have a look at some of the action there. This is Larry Wallace. Given all time, all sorts of time, the quarterback Marinovic and Wallace gets himself open. You can't give a quarterback that much time. No, you can't cover uh, for that period of time. And here we see uh, Stornberger coming out on, on a blitz. And he sheds two blockers. An excellent tackle here. Strips the ball at the same time. And he just destroys this play. He's looking for the ball here. He knew he caused a fumble, but he didn't know where it went. And that's what you call total dominance of a defensive player over an offensive situation. Yeah, and you sense that they were struggling off offensively then. They failed to get the, the, the playoff in time, and uh, it was it was panic stations back there once or twice, wasn't it? Yes, well, Notre Dame's defense have put uh, the Trojans out of their game plan offensively because they've been so strong defensively, which is surprisingly for, uh, for, for, uh, for Notre Dame because normally they're an offensive team. Well, certainly we were hoping to see a lot of the rocket on punt returns, but these punts from Ron Dale have been exceptional, haven't they? You, you, nobody's going to return those. No, he's been getting 50, 60 yards a punt, and it's absolutely phenomenal. But Rocket nearly broke one last time. Let's see what he does this time. He's Nick. in the game here. Now they, were, they didn't run out of time. Let's see what did happen. The rocket was coming back on a reverse. And it's against Notre Dame. Ball, full start, offense. First so now you're getting back into an area of the field where traditionally Lou Holtz has been conservative. You're getting back now to 13 yards. And if Notre Dame can't run the ball here, they may be in trouble. Exactly, because uh, USC is going to play against the run the first couple of downs here. Now, defensively, they hold Notre Dame without a first down. They should have a very, very good field position. And that's going to be a sprint out. Meyer keeping it. Meyer got away from one man and then goes out of bounds. And he got up to the 20. So he got seven yards on first down, but it was first and 15. I think this is almost like a run all the way. A uh, flanker on the outside. Sean for Notre Dame was trying to block. Sean Davis was coming back for a block immediately. So 
Well, one tells thing, me it was a rollout all the way. One thing you'd prefer if you're Notre Dame, you'd prefer not to see your guys go out of bounds. That's right. Second down and eight now from the 20. This is a fake reverse. Brooks keeps the football, but he only gets two. And they had that call on first down the other way. When they got the penalty. Well, the Irish will now have third and six. Big third down, still better than six minutes to play. 10 to six, Notre Dame the lead. Big first down. Here comes the play in with Ray Griggs. Ismail will be in the slot. Trips right, only Culver behind Rick Meyer. That better be a draw, there it is. Rodney Culver didn't get there, tried to pick his way, and was stopped. Morrell at the bottom, Gideon Morrell that made the tackle. I'm sure if we knew it was a draw, everybody else in the stadium did. Three downs and out, just the second to Notre Dame punt of the fourth quarter. See that and penalty, on, penalty on first down hurt him. Yep. Put him in that position, see? And they from, again, for from that position in the field, Notre position. Dame is not going to throw. Especially after last week. Patrick yeah. the punt. drives Lockwood way back. He gets some room up the middle, and USC will get the ball. Great and punting. they're 33. Great punting tonight. That's a 53-yard punt for Henry. 5.03 to play. USC 67 yards away as we pause now for a regional break. Welcome back. We're inside the blimp. This is the blimp that's been giving us those superb aerial shots of the Coliseum and, of course, uh, downtown Los Angeles. Got a lot of Dame fans in there, I think. Perhaps there we see the hat. But uh, down on terra firma, I don't want to frighten anybody here, but there's five minutes left. There's confirmation. There's just four points in it. USC are one play away from uh, being ahead in this game, despite being outplayed in the whole of the second half. Yes, but I think uh, their defense, uh, Notre Dame's defense, is playing well enough uh, that uh, they've put USC out of the game plan they were originally in, and they're in a sort of a scattergun attack now. And I'm, I'm still confident that Notre Dame are going to win this game. Uh, and I'm still confident Notre, uh, that uh, you're going to see the Rocket score a touchdown, if not two. <laughs> <laughs> you're sticking with that one, aren't you, Wade? But, um, well, it's a very interesting and finely balanced situation. Notre Dame have been so dominant that you kind of think that they've got the game wrapped up because they've uh, put in so many drives, but, of course, they failed to punch that last one in. And a four-point lead is not a lot. No, uh, it's anybody's ball game still on paper, but I think Notre Dame are playing strong enough to have this one won. Well, five minutes left, and if uh, USC are going to do it, it's uh, put up or shut up time, I think. First down. In the last week. Oh, it's up in the air and almost intercepted off Lockwood's hands. And oh, Marinovich knows how close that was. They'll never get a better chance for an interception. That ball was in the air a long time. Wow. Stonebreaker made the dive as the closest man, but could not get it. That's the kind of year it's been defensively for Notre Dame. They just haven't been able to take the ball away. Only got, what, nine interceptions on the year, on the whole year. Second and ten. Three-man rush. Tip ball up in the air. And that one is intercepted. Intercepted by Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker! And they're gonna call it incomplete. Another official comes in and rules it incomplete. And Larry Smith says how sweet it is. And Stonebreaker said he got it. Well, we should have a look to find out whether or not it We're did. We'll take a look at this. Oh, there it is. is. There's your... Good yep. call. Yep, good he call. He did not get it. He had it in his hands and it hit the ground. Yep, good call. Third and ten, right. USC. Out of the shotgun. Three-man rush. It kills Notre Dame. And Lockwood not goes down. And not now it's fourth and eight. Well, they got plenty of time, though. They got to punt it. With 440 They're not going to go on fourth down here. Got 437. Now, Larry Smith wants 
talk to his people. He's going to have to start thinking about using his timeouts also. USC has their full complement. Notre Dame only has two timeouts left. USC and three. Ismail back. He's at the 22. Dale gets off this one. And a fair catch called for by the up man at the 27-yard line. Tommy Carter at 37 the 37-yard punt. Well, we're in a rich, uh, living dangerously there, but I don't think there's any real argument there that Stonebreaker didn't get that ball and it was a trap. Yes, the ball uh, definitely hit the ground there, but it was very close. Uh, here we see Notre Dame's defense really coming on song there. The ball was thrown high. Uh, Stonebreaker just about catches the ball, but it falls on the deck, uh, and uh, that could have been a very important interception. But uh, it wasn't to be, but uh, USC didn't do anything at all with their possessions. They kicked it away after two yards of offense. Notre Dame's defense really toughing it out. And the clock now a bit of a factor as far as USC is concerned. Just four minutes left. So if the Irish can put a drive together here, they could wrap this one up. That's correct. You've got to go outside when you stop stuffing. You start, the linebackers are blitzing. It's almost like an eight-man front. On first down, they're going to come. Well, the question here is, well, is Lou Holtz going to say to the defense win the game? Well, I'll tell you, they've won it so far. This is the best the defense has played all year long. They only, they, no touchdowns. They've only given up two field goals. And Notre Dame milking the clock. They lost two on first down. It's second and 12. Got to go outside. Ismail, the tailback. He'll get it. Cut back and slip and go down. Oh, there was a hole there, too. Yep. A lot of players going down on this turf as the game is worn along. So now it's going to be third down and long yardage. And I would say that there is, well, there's no chance of the ball being thrown on this play. Pardon? There's no chance of Notre Dame passing the football on this play. No chance. I don't chance. know. I mean, you might see something over on the sideline, to the sideline. Less than three minutes, 30 12. There it comes, roll out right. My goodness. I are still up, still up, and now goes down, so there's no first down. And Notre Dame will have to punt it back, and USC will get another chance as Craig Hartsiker made the play with two and a half to play. Notre Dame can run that clock down to close to two minutes before punting it away. Well, it's set up. Of course, the points are, are a little bit different last week, but USC, 16-yard touchdown pass, won it in the last 30 seconds. 45, what was it, 45-42 last week? Yeah. There's, a, oh, a low snap. Hendrick does a nice job. Kick is short. And it takes a good Notre Dame bounce and will go out of bounds at the USC 22-yard line. With 1.55 remaining, still plenty of time for Southern Cal with three timeouts. 53-yard punt with the great bounce. Notre Dame basketball debuts on Sports Channel Wednesday night. The Irish coming off a start that saw them go to New York for the preseason NIT. We'll meet Indiana. You'll see it live Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern. Most heralded, America. most heralded freshman ever at Indiana, Damon Bailey. 10 to six, Notre Dame, a minute 55 remaining. Southern Cal from their 22, first and 10. <laughs> Underneath the Royster. Oh, the tailback breaks, hits, breaks, hits, and he's out to the 45, a big play. Should have been wrapped up 15 yards sooner, and he's out to the 45. But he broke a 23-yard run here, and I tell you, Marinovich did a wonderful job of getting rid of the football. Watch under a four-man rusher, he steps up into the pocket, and watch his pitch. I tell you, he had to jump up a little bit, a jump pass, and Royster did the rest. Greg Davis on the stop. Minute 43, now they start the clock. Southern Cal up to the 45 on a big first down play. Notre Dame looking for an interception in this spot. Anything tip. Royster underneath again. This time he'll go out of bounds at the Notre Dame 45. 
So very quickly, Southern Cal moves it into striking range at a minute 31. Notre Dame 10, USC 6. I don't know if you can keep that kid out of the end zone for 60 minutes. That's what Notre Dame is trying to do. You know who's really pulling for Notre Dame? The Orange Bowl. <laughs> 46 yard line of Notre Dame. It's actually second down and one. Three-yard line. Got flag down. Midfield. Well, did somebody finally hold? Yep. They played this whole game without a holding penalty, and finally USC is called for holding. And I'll tell you, that was blatant on both Bob Dahl and George Williams. I'm not sure which one they called, obviously. But I was just thinking that. That's the first holding penalty of the game. And that'll march Southern Cal back into their own territory at a minute and 24 seconds. Well, it's a tough turnaround here for USC. Instead of having first down about the 30-yard line, they got it back at their own 44. Can you believe USC, Notre Dame, and look at USC's rushing yards. That's remarkable. And that penalty marks it back to the USC 44. It's second down and 11. There's a three-man rush. He'll have a lot of time to throw the football here. Going down the far sideline. Out of bounds. Travis Hanna out of bounds. Greg Davis on the coverage with Todd Light at 118 to play. Third down. Of course, now it is four down time for Larry Smith. Marinovich, 25 of 37 for 262. But never would yards be more deceiving than tonight. That's right. All the yards mean nothing. His team doesn't have a touchdown yet. They still have a minute 18 to play. Blitz, here comes Andre Jones. Picked up, dumped out, dropped by Lockwood. He probably would have had the first down. And now it is fourth and 11. One more play, a minute 13. Going to take a timeout now and talk about it. Larry Smith wants time. So USC will take their first time out of the half with a minute 13 to play. The executive producer of Notre Dame football is Jeff Rui. The coordinating producer is David Hoffman. All season long, Paul Carlson has been our producer, and tonight's game has been directed by Steve Ulrich. And the rest of the fine crew we acknowledged earlier, folks who have been with us all season all long, year week long. in, week out. And a great job. And don't forget, Sports Channel America's coverage of Notre Dame sports will continue with basketball beginning Wednesday night. So what do you do from here, Wayne? Fourth and 11, and uh, you've got to get that first down, no question. Yes, uh, I, I still think that Notre Dame's defense are just keeping uh, the Trojans out of the game plan enough that uh, they're having to do things they're not used to doing. Uh, that was a good pass by the quarterback, and uh, uh, they're normally uh, well-rehearsed re offensive game plan. Uh, the, the man was hearing footsteps and dropped the ball. Uh, 41 there, uh, not doing a very good job at... Uh, and uh, proceeding uh, down the field. But uh, I think Notre Dame are doing what they have to do and pressurizing the Trojans everywhere on this field. But win or lose today, I think there's no question that the, the Achilles heel for the Fighting Irish all season long has been their inability to put people away. Yes, uh, they certainly have not had the, I think the depth in strength and, uh, and the tenacity once they had an opponent down to bury him uh, and They've always said that they didn't have a great team, that they had a winning team. Well, the game's on the line now, fourth and 11. Three-man rush. Three-man. Running, running, now throwing, and Wellman, where are they going to mark it? He did not get it. They marked him out of bounds short, and Notre Dame will take over. Oh, here's the flag. Wellman dove at the stick. He tried to get the ball to the stick. 
the USC people furious on the sidelines. The ball is spotted. I believe it is spotted. Shy. On contact foul on the offense. I think he's nervous too. The run did not get past the first down. Therefore, it'll be first and 10, Notre Dame. And that might do it. Notre Dame will get the ball. They will get 15 yards as well. Watch Wellman here at the end of the run. Watch That's him at right. the end. He got to get to the 45 yard line. I don't know, his right foot was at the 45 yard line where he's, but that wasn't where the ball was. Watch. He got to get to the 45 yard line. Well, he pushed light really back very well. Where does he catch it? Catches it shy? He's shy. You see his right? Well, I don't know. That looks like that might be a pretty good call. He was out of bounds when he stuck the ball back. And Todd Light may have saved it. Now USC has two timeouts left. Notre Dame at the 40 of USC. Meyer goes down. USC has two timeouts left. They use one. And here, I'd like to say something, Paul, here, now that we're getting down to the end here. And it looks like Notre Dame is going to win this football game. Let, let's just say, let's hypothetically say Notre Dame wins this and beats Colorado at the Orange Bowl, hypothetically. Uh -huh. Miami wins out. Miami has done a lot of propagandizing this week that would have you believe they should be national champs. But if that happens, Notre Dame and Miami would have identical records. Notre Dame would have beaten number one in the bowl and beat Miami head to head. That's right. The, the same last, analogy used was, last year. Was last year. Of course, they thought it was a little bit different last year, right? Yeah. Miami seems like they kind of want to have it both ways. Both ways. Yeah. And I'm not sure that really w makes sense. Now, if Notre Dame can hold on here and beat Colorado in the Orange Bowl, I'm not saying they should be I'll national champs. I vote for Georgia Tech. But that, I would, you know something? I would, too. You know, I think Georgia but, Tech ought to win. I, it is absolutely ludicrous to me that Miami can be ranked second with two losses on the road. Both their tough road games this year, they lost. That's if right. If Notre Dame holds on here, they would have won three incredibly tough road games this year. And ranked ahead of Miami, being ranked ahead of BYU, which beat them and has one fewer loss. I'm not sure I quite understand that. One more timeout for USC. Notre Dame may, well, I'm not sure how the mathematics are going to work here. They may not be able to completely run the clock out. Oh, I think they need to get the clock under one minute here. If they just take it, pick it up. They'll run a sweep. But the Rocket needs some time up. He's brought down at the 40. But that play only gains a yard. Yeah, but he got the clock underneath a minute, see? Well, Southern Cal is going to let it run here. Well, they're going to force Notre Dame to punt. Now they're going to run it here, and they're going to run it down, and Notre Dame can run another sweep here. They can run the clock down to about 9 or 10 seconds. The key here for Notre Dame is to not go out of bounds. In fact, Notre Dame would probably take a penalty here. If they were smart. They'd let the clock run out and take the five yards. They don't need the yards. It is the waters inside. And now Southern Cal will, let's see, they're going to call a timeout. At 12 seconds. Now, if I were Notre Dame there, I would let that clock run. Taking the five-yard penalty, then run that play, you would have burned another five or six seconds off the clock. But the ball at the 37, now a decision for Lou Holtz. Yeah, you could actually run a play here. Oh, you know. Uh-uh. He'll punt it. How about having Meyer drop back and throw a long? You burn most of the 12 seconds off. You have to drop back and throw a long pass. I, uh, you're going to be my offensive coordinator <laughs> if I'm ever going to be a coach. I mean, we get fired in about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> For that matter, if you had a guy fed, you could give the ball to Rock and have him run backwards, too. Uh, you can have run backwards all the way back and take a safety and burn the 12 better, seconds. You better off. get that punting team in there. I'll guarantee you. Here it comes. <laughs> you don't ride riverboats, do you? Well, I'll tell you, you, know, you just don't do it here. I mean, Evans, it ain't anybody like to gamble more than I have. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Notre Dame sends Hendrick out 12 seconds. USC has no timeouts, but that's I'll go for the block here. Significant. They have to go for the block. There's any problem with the snap? Your head should fall down. You don't want to do here. Now Notre Dame lets the clock run. They take the five yards here to give Hendrick a little more room. Head ball, delay a game, offense. At the Coliseum in Los Angeles, 12 seconds remain. Notre Dame with fourth down at the USC 42-yard line following a delay of game penalty will punt. Greg Hendrick to punt it. USC will get the ball probably with one play. And Hendrick Kick it into the end zone. The end zone. That's what he did. He just wanted to get the ball. Clock runs down to five seconds, and so USC will have one play in which they'll need to go 80 yards. He just wanted to kick it out of bounds, not taking any chance on a return. 91,639. On hand here tonight. And Notre Dame one play away from a most unlikely win, unlikely by the score. Ten, Ten to six, Notre Dame. Notre Dame's defense has been outstanding. No touchdown. Let's see. Let's look back on the year very quickly. Willie Clark is playing back at midfield. Everybody, everybody has scored a touchdown. This is the first game all year long, and uh, Notre Dame. And the Ravens gets sacked to end the game. How about that? Sorich puts his signature on a great Notre Dame victory by sacking Marinovich when USC was trying to run a Hail Mary pass. And the Irish have defeated USC for the eighth consecutive year. Unbelievable. So it's appropriate, I think, that Chris Zorich came up with the final play of the game, the sack there that preserved the four-point victory. And really, it was a story of defense as far as the Irish were concerned. Yes, they raised their game defensively and really shut out uh, the Trojans from their game plan. And uh, that's where they need to do improve if they're going to go against Colorado and do anything in the uh, uh, championship uh, Competition. Well, their next, their next game will be in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day when they'll face number one ranked Colorado. That's a game we're going to have for you, so uh, make sure you watch that one. We'll be having it live. Now then, before we go, let's just uh, remind you of our competition, your chance to win some Notre Dame and University of Miami goodies. There we are, hats and jumpers and mugs and all sorts of uh, paraphernalia. All you've got to do is answer two simple questions. Number one, who beat Miami in the opening game of the 1990 camp? Campaign. And we give you a choice of three teams who beat Miami in their opening game of the season. Was it Penn State, Kansas, or number three, Brigham Young? So that's question number one. Penn State, Kansas, or Brigham Young? Number two, which current Notre Dame player is nicknamed the Rocket? And again, it's a multiple choice one. Was it Ricky Waters? Is it Rangie Bismail? Or is it number three, Rodney Culver? If you think you know the answers, then send them on a postcard together with your name and address to Screen Sport, American Football Competition number two, PO Box 40A, London W1B 40A. Make sure they're here by December the 21st. Some final thoughts from you, Wayne. Do they deserve to be still in with a shot at the national championship? Well, uh, I don't know whether they deserve to be a national champion, so I think they deserve to win this game because they played defensively better than they have for the whole season. Season. And Colorado, if they can hold Colorado to that sort of thing where they don't score a touchdown against them, yes, they deserve to be ranked certainly number one or two. Right. Well, we'll be there, of course, in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day. It's been a wild and crazy season with the Fighting Irish here on Notre Dame, and it'll finish on, De on uh, January the 1st. Make sure you join us for that one. But for now, we leave you with the highlights of the game from Wayne and me. Good night. And so senior Quinn Rodriguez tries a dead-on 23-yarder. And the drive culminates with three. Maybe a good omen for Notre Dame because that's how they beat Miami. They got, were able to stop Miami on drives for putting it in the end zone. Now Hendrick will try a 31 yard field goal out of Jim Sexton's hole. They take a deep drop, Notre Dame, they drop almost nine yards back on the extra on the replacement drop. And Hendrick boots it straight through to tie the game. Up. And 
Rodriguez is perfect. So USC takes the lead back. They're down a yard. Myers in trouble. Pitch to Brooks. Flag down. Touchdown, Notre Dame. And Marinovich gets sacked to end the game. How about that? Sorich puts his signature on a great Notre Dame victory by sacking Marinovich when USC was trying to run the Hail Mary pass. And the Irish have defeated USC. It's an opportunity for us to try to keep our streak alive against Cal. Yes, at UCLA, they refer to it as the streak. The Bruins have won 18 straight football games from the California Golden Bears. As a matter of fact, UCLA's mastery over Cal here at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley goes back even longer, 22 years. The last time the Bears beat UCLA in Berkeley was in 1968. So now it's 1990, and it's homecoming on the UC Berkeley campus. Will UCLA continue its domination, or will Cal end two decades of frustration? Red, 45. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Touchdown. Welcome to the Bay Area for Eurosports Roundup of Week 8 of the Pac-10 season. UCLA at the California Golden Bears is our big game, and later we'll also have highlights of the Trojans hosting the Arizona Wildcats. First though, let's take a look at the week's other results. Washington continued their race to the Rose Bowl with a 52-16 demolition of the Stanford Cardinal. Oregon were 20-point victors over Arizona State, and the Washington State Cougars put up 55 points to Oregon State's 24. So, the Pac-10 standings with two results to come look like this. Washington strengthened their grip at the top of the table. The next four teams are all featured tonight and all need victory to keep up with the Huskies. Down in the bottom five, Washington State have pulled to an even record with this week's win, but the other four teams are now well and truly out of the race for that Pac-10 Rose Bowl berth. So, with UCLA and Cal ready to lock horns, let's join our commentator. Cal comes in here on a roll. The Bears have won three in a row. And that is Cal's best start in eight years. And they have a great ground game, the WW attack, namely Anthony Wallace and Russell White. Yeah, Anthony Wallace, a JC transfer out of Pasadena City College. Every time he's touched the ball, he's really an explosive runner. And right here, he picks up a few more yards. And so far, Wallace has 621 yards to his credit this year. But of course, the big play guy, the breakaway guy for the Bears is sophomore Russell White out of Crespi High in the Los Angeles San Fernando Valley area. And Russell White, the first time he touched the ball for Cal this year, a 99-yard kickoff return versus Miami. Of such, legends are born, and White has seven touchdowns to his credit. Now, UCLA has a potent ground game of its own, namely the pair of uh, Brian Brown and Kevin Smith. Brian Brown coming off three excellent weeks and especially a great game against San Diego State a week ago, 175 yards rushing. And of course, Kevin Smith, who compliments him so well, getting a big block as well. Brian Brown has had three games, 100 yards or more, going for number four here today. But Smith is the number two rusher for the Bruin. Yeah, and his versatility really adds a lot to the Bruin attack. He's such a big, powerful runner that he really can dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, we know that UCLA can score, Cal can score. It should be a very entertaining game here today. There's the Donahue record, and Donahue all smiles here as he talks with some of the officials prior to the start of the game. On the other side of the field is Bruce Snyder who was the former head coach at Utah State and assisted at SC, and Snyder has the Cal program moving upward. Bruce Snyder, 50-year-old head coach in his fourth year with the California Golden Bears. That's what they call tight walk hill. Whoops, look out. They, they have the cannons go off right prior to kickoff, and it 
really shocks everybody, but the people up in Tightwad Hill, they're used to it. UCLA won the toss, and they have elected to receive, and Brian Brown will be deep for UCLA as Robbie Keane prepares to kick off for the Bears. Brian Brown, key man certainly for UCLA. And Keen, I would guess, may even try to kick away from Brown, but we'll see. Crowd of about 50,000 on hand on this beautiful October Saturday afternoon. And we're underway here at Strawberry Canyon. Brown, six yards deep, kneels down, and the Bruins will start out from their own 20-yard line. UCLA and Cal. And at quarterback, of course, for the UCLA Bruins, Tommy Maddox, a 19-year-old redshirt freshman from Bedford, Texas. Tommy Maddox will have a, a key receiver in Reggie Moore, certainly. He's the leading receiver for the Bruins, 22 catches. Long gain is 40 yards and two touchdowns. Nowitzki, Spalding, Zeno, Lynn, and Fuller, the offensive line for UCLA. And here is the first play from scrimmage from the UCLA 20-yard line. Right away, it's Kevin Smith. Nothing there. He's going to lose a couple of yards. The officials may mark his progress to the 19. A loss of one by that roused Cal defense. Rhett Hall, John Belli, and Joel Dixon, the three-man front. Odom, Ayer, Redman, and Collier, with uh, Redman, a key man, certainly, in the linebacking core. And look out for John Hardy. He's a tough man in the defensive backfield for Cal. So a loss of a yard. It'll be second and 10 now for UCLA. Second and 11 at the 19-yard line. Maddox will run it. Not very far. Rhett Hall, the right tackle, burst in there and uh, floored him at the 18. One more yard loss for UCLA. So the Bruins have been going backward here. Loss of a yard. Tommy Maddox just dropping back the pass. Really no one to throw to. Red Hall right there to stop him. The Bruins will operate out of the I formation. And now Brown moves up. He's a wing back. Lone running back is Kevin Smith. Bears expecting a pass and they're going to get it from Maddox if he can get it away. He can't get it away. Stopped at the 20-yard line. I would say this California team is really roused for an all-out effort. Red Hall has had two tackles on the first series, the first offensive series for UCLA. So on fourth down, it'll be punt time for UCLA. Courtney Kyler, who has been averaging almost 41 yards a punt, awaiting the snap from center John Winnie. Brian Preggs is deep for Cal. He's standing in the 36. Oh! He still gets it away. Craig's at the 45 and is put down at the 49-yard line. 36 yards on the punt, a four-yard return, and the tackle made by James Malone. But watch the UCLA putter, Courtney Kyler, dropping the ball. That was a perfect, perfectly good snap. Well, the snap was right there. The ball just hit him right in the head, and it's a good thing for UCLA that Cal decided not to rush on that particular occasion. Kyler still being able to get the kickoff. But now the Bears with a great opportunity in the first minute of the game. First down at the California 49-yard line. It's Anthony Wallace into the middle. Wallace goes to the 46-yard line of UCLA. Let's check over that California offense. The quarterback is Mike Pulaski. He's a 205-pound junior, and uh, Wallace just carried the ball. He's certainly a key back for the Bears. And Treggs, of course, a wide receiver for Cal. Troy Azine is 6'7 and 272 pounds. Key man in the offensive line for the Bears. It's Wallace again. And Wallace dropped it around the 43 of UCLA. Let's check over the UCLA defense. Walker on Watwebi and Brian Kelly. Kelly is starting a defensive tackle. Pfeiffer, Shaw, Argo, and Keaton. And Roman Pfeiffer is back in there at a linebacking spot. The defensive secondary, Gray, Lambert, Darby, and Eric Turner. Turner has four intercepted passes to his credit this year. Wallace 
Wallace goes to the 36 yard line. Tackled by Dion Lambert, the right cornerback. So the California Bears are on the move and they'll bring the sticks up. A first down for California. Well, you see the numbers on Anthony Wallace and such an explosive runner right that last play. You see him just bursting through the line of scrimmage. Eric Turner there to make a big hit. Cal with a great opportunity with a first down at the UCLA 36 yard line. Pulaski back to throw. He completes it to Greg Zummel. Zummel inside the 25. 11 yards on the pass play. The tackle is made by Stacy Argo. This Cal team really fired up against UCLA because the Bears have dropped 18 straight football games to UCLA. You have to go back to 1971, the last victory for Cal over UCLA. Let's check out the referee today and see what he's got. That's Bill Richardson. Dead ball personal foul, California. First down and 25. Oh, that'll stop a drive. First and 25. No, and it sure will. I look at Bruce Snyder. He says, I, I, I don't know what happened out there. Yeah, dead ball, meaning it happened long after the play, and I'm sure that's what Coach Bruce Snyder's a little bit upset about. One of his players obviously lost some composure and really puts him in a hole here. Referee today is Bill Richardson. He's a fire chief in the San Francisco Fire Department. Lives up in Novato. So the ball now goes back to the 40-yard line. First and 25 for the Bears at the UCLA 40. And off to Wallace. And Wallace is corralled at the 33 by Dion Lambert. Obviously, Cal has come out here saying that, look, we're going to run that ball on UCLA. Boy, they sure are. And, and what they did that time, you see the numbers on Anthony Wallace, Altadena, California, transfer from Pasadena City College. On the last play there, they really spread UCLA's defense out. And like you said, Mike, they're really apt to rush the ball quite a bit today. Wallace just picked up eight, so it'll be second and 17 for the Bears from the UCLA 32. Wallace in the middle. And he goes close to the 31-yard line, still there. First man to make contact was Brian Kelly with some help from inside linebacker Meech Shaw. Ball is spotted down at the 31-yard line, a pickup of a yard. Call it third and 16 now for Cal. Five defensive backs employed by UCLA, Gray, Darby, Turner, Lambert, and Damian Lyons. Anticipating a Pulaski pass. He's got time. Now he's going to run out of time, and he just did get the pass away. Racine Keaton was right on his back, riding him piggyback. The outside pressure from linebacker Racine Keaton. Racine Keaton just with great speed that time, tracking Pulaski down. Pulaski really just has nowhere to go with the ball, and I'm not sure if they were trying to set up a screen to the right here, Anthony Wallace, but Racine Keaton making a fine play. Cal's going to try a field goal here with Robbie Keane to do the honors. This will be a 48-yard field goal. Waiting the snap from James Richard. The kick by Keane is up. Good. A 48-yard field goal by Robbie Keane. So a 3-0 lead for the Golden Bears, and with the Bruins unable to move the ball on the next drive, it's a cow ball again as we rejoin play. 4.17 left in the quarter, second and goal, California. Greg Zumald and Anthony Wallace, the two backs for Pulaski. He's going to throw in the end zone, and it is no good. Pulaski was going to Sean Dawkins, a slot back. And Carlton Gray was right with Dawkins. Yeah, Carlton Gray makes, he has fine position actually that time on Sean Dawkins. They're just trying to throw a little up route, a fade route they call it, and to the back corner of the end zone. Carlton Gray right there to make a fine play. The Bruins now will go with five DBs. Carlton Gray, Matt Darby, Eric Turner, Dion Lambert, and Damian Lyons. Third and 11 for Cal. Pulaski fires this pass and it's caught by Dawkins. Did he get in or not? No signal as yet. He did not get in. Stopped just shy of the goal line. Sean Dawkins. 
He was sandwiched by Matt Darby and Eric Turner. This is a real interesting play here. It's a delayed screen to the wide receiver. You're going to see a bunch of Cal linemen out in front there, 75 and 56. Steve Gordon, the center out there. Pulaski just flips it to Dawkins, and he picks up a few blockers there down to the one-foot line. The nose of the football is tickling the goal line. Fourth down and inches. It's Wallace. Touchdown, California. Anthony Wallace scoring his third touchdown this season. The leading rusher for Bruce Snyder and the California Bears. Snyder trying to end 18 years of frustration at the hands of UCLA. And this has been all Cal. Make no mistake about it here in the first quarter. They have really dominated. The point extra attempt, the point after attempt is somebody got a hand on it and went right through. Well, once again, UCLA were unable to get even a first down on their next drive, so it's the Golden Bears in possession as we rejoin play. First and ten on the Cal 47. First and ten now for California. The ball is at the 47. Uh-oh. Pulaski is throwing, and he completes it. Zumbal for the 20. Zumbal will be tackled. Boy, when you see a broken play like that, you have to say to yourself, this is going to be California's day. Well, I don't understand it, and I'm sure the UCLA defense doesn't understand it, but Pulaski just turning to pitch the ball, nobody home. He recovers his own fumble, picks up the ball and tosses it to his fullback. Zamalt, who takes off to the races. Russell White down there looking for a block, misses the Fine. one block he should have made. Finally brought down at the four-yard line, a 49-yard pass play on a broken play. Russell White trying to leap over the pile up there, and he probably didn't get anything at all. They're going to mark the ball right at the four-yard line. But a broken play like that. Yeah, really and truly a broken play. And what I'm surprised about is that none of their linemen, it looked as though it was a running play the whole way, but none of their linemen got down the field, so Pulaski, he could throw the ball without the risk of having a flag thrown. Second and goal for California at the UCLA four. The Bears already lead 10 to nothing. Zumo and Wallace in the backfield. The pass is touchdown. Mike Pulaski to Brent Woodall. And we are still in the first quarter. That's the good news for UCLA. The bad news is California is about to take a 17 to nothing first period lead. There's the pass and the grab made by Brent Woodall, a junior. His first touchdown catch of the season. The holder will be Mike Beebe, a third string quarterback, and Robbie Keane will attempt the extra point. is uh, 24 out of 24 make it 25 out of 25 and California has a 17 to nothing first quarter lead over UCLA with 25 seconds left in the first quarter Pulaski with a little play action fake into the line of scrimmage just comes rolling out to his right just flips the ball to Woodall Eric Turner just a step late the Golden Bears with a 17 point lead join us after the break for the second quarter Seven UCLA, the ball is at the 48 of the Bruins. 17 to nothing, California leading. I'm Mike Walden along with Tom Ramsey from Strawberry Canyon here in Berkeley. Maddox steps up and fires complete at the 44 yard line to Reggie Moore. And that'll be enough for a first down for the Bruins. Maddox throw was a little on the low side, but Moore made a nice catch. Yeah, it sure was. Maddox just dropping back. Does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket right there, finding Reggie Moore for the first down. And Michael Moore, no relation to Reggie, comes in at a wide receiver spot for UCLA. So you've got the two Moores in there, Michael Moore and Reggie Moore, and a new tight end, Corwin Anthony. 
First and ten for the Bruins at the Cal 43. 17 to nothing the Bears. Brian Brown butting heads with Cal's Ron English. Looked like uh, two Rams meeting head on. Uh, uh, really, really was true. Brian Brown running awfully hard as he has the past three weeks. Takes a hand up, just a little cutback that he makes. Boom, another big hit. He'll be sore after this game. They spot the ball at the California 34 yard line. We're a minute and 18 seconds into the second quarter. Rick Daly. Corwin Anthony and Michael Moore, the receivers for UCLA. The give is to the fullback, Kevin Smith. He gets maybe a yard, but he only had to get about a yard to get the first down. And they will spot the ball at the 32-yard line. Ron English on the hit. And that'll be a first down for UCLA. Well, it looks like UCLA is settling down a little bit. They're going back to some things. They really just didn't have a chance early on in the game. The first quarter it belonged entirely to Cal. The California Bears overwhelmed them. But it's still early in the game. We still have over 13 minutes to play here in the second quarter. California leading 17 to nothing. Sean Wills, Brian Brown. And it's going to be Maddox throwing incomplete to Brown. Maddox was really pressured. The pressure being applied by Joel Dixon, the defensive tackle on the left side for California. Actually, just a great job by Maddox just to unload the ball, get it get it where they ain't. And, and this is what he does. He just drops the ball off. They're trying to set up a screen. Brian Brown covered, just does the right thing, throws the ball into the ground. Maddox is one out of five in passing for only 10 yards. We're early in the second quarter, Mike Walden and Tom Ramsey from Strawberry Canyon in Berkeley. 17 to nothing, the Cal Bears on top. Play action and Maddox rolls out to his right. May run with the ball. Cuts back against the grain. He's got a path. And he's brought down at the 24-yard line by Ron English. The Cal defense did a nice job that time rebounding and getting back into position. It looked like uh, Maddox had a pretty good alley. Yeah, he really did. An awfully nice job by Maddox on this play. He's going to roll out. And what we don't see, Reggie Moore is cutting across the field at the deep post and just... Maddox, there's no way he could see him. Maddox doing the right thing, picking up some yards with the ball. Third down and two. They will operate out of the eye. Up in front of Brian Brown is fullback Kevin Smith. Smith started the season as the number three fullback. Number one now. The pitch goes to Brown. Brown inside the 20, put down around the California 19. Tackle is made by Cornell Collier, the outside linebacker of the Bears. So the Bears and the Bruins battling here in Berkeley. The three Bs, the Bears, the Bruins in Berkeley. And it's all California, 17 to nothing so far. Brown has 35 yards in six carries. Jim Souders handling our stats today. Stage manager is Alex Wilson. Jerry Weinstein in the truck. And it'll be first and 10 now for UCLA. From the Cal 19, Maddox on the run, firing off the fingertips of Scott Miller. Dave Wilson guarding on the play for the Bears. Larry Myers, our director today, Steve Elkin, producer. Right there, you're going to see Miller just running an out route. Ball's delivered just a shade late. Second down and 10, UCLA, as Miller goes wide to the left. Reggie Moore split to the right side. 17 to nothing, Cal. Tommy Maddox handing off to Brown. Big hole, Brown makes his cut at the 10, trying to get to the outside and his pull down. John Hardy grabbed him by one arm and got him to the AstroTurf at the eight yard line. But it'll be first and goal to go for UCLA at the Cal eight. Brian Brown's doing a great job out of the eye formation, taking the handoff from Maddox. Runs to his left, and he'll pick up a block by Scott Miller, who's really just not able to bring down John Hardy. John Hardy making a fine play on Brian Brown. Scott Miller leaves, replaced by Michael Moore. Reggie Moore is to the right side. Michael Moore to the left side. First and goal, the ball is at the California seven-yard line. That's Corwin Anthony moving over to the left side. 
He's the tight end. Hand off to Brian Brown and penalty markers dropped all over the place. Bruins getting down inside the seven yard line and let's see what this is all about. The referee is Bill Richardson. He's from Novato, California. Conferring now with uh, Charlie Stewart, the headlinesman. There is no penalty on the play. The ball rolled away. We had a remark at reset the 25 second clock. Okay, Bill, we'll do just that. The ball had rolled away. I guess that means a little bit of a breeze came up there and caused the ball to move. So it'll still be first and goal for UCLA. The Bruins with the ball at the California Bears 7. Cal 17, UCLA nothing. Over 11 minutes still to be played here in the second quarter. Officials taking a little time getting set. Now we're ready to go. First and goal, UCLA. Brian Brown, not much there. He's trying to make something out of it. Some tough yards for Brian Brown over left tackle. They will mark his forward progress. Hanna two making the tackle for California. He's a defensive tackle. Chidia Hanna two out of Berkeley. They are going to spot the ball at the six yard line near the five. Bruce Snyder looking on his fourth year as head coach. This could be Cal's first winning season in some time. Second and five. Bruins need five yards to get a touchdown. The pitch to Brian Brown. Makes his cut at the five. He is really hammered. Gets away. Touchdown. UCLA. Oh, I mean to tell you, you talk about your hard-nosed runs. There is a primary case. Brian Brown. Looked like he was going to be stopped at the two. He would not quit. Really did. Great second effort by Brian Brown. Takes the pitch. Kevin Smith, big block out in front. A nice cut by Brown and really hit hard, but a great second effort getting into the end zone. So the Bruins have scored, and that means that UCLA's record continues. UCLA has now scored in 223 straight games, an NCAA record. Maddox will hold. D'Aloiso to tack on the extra point. And he does. So the Bruins with seven points on the board, but Cal are still ten ahead as we pick up the next drive with a Golden Bears second and ten at the UCLA 28. Seven minutes left in the half. Mike Pulaski rolling to his right, stops and now fires, threw it away. I mean, he threw that ball almost up into the stands. He wanted to make sure nobody, but nobody caught that football. That's right, Eric Turner down there hoping he would throw the ball, but not so lucky. Little over six minutes uh, left in the first half as the Cal trainer still working on Russell White. Bobby Orr's got his left arm on the shoulder. Could be a pinched nerve, but that's just a guess as I look at the monitor. I am not a medical doctor, nor do I profess to be. I'm guessing along with the rest. Third down and 10. Ball is at the 28 of UCLA. 17-7 Cal leading it. Marty Holly. A true freshman out of San Fernando, California, Marty Holly. And Holly for a touchdown run. Well, what happens, Cal ends up motioning Zumalt, the fullback, wide and leaves nobody in the middle. UCLA's defense, nobody home. That's the first touchdown for the true freshman, Marty Holly. And it's only the fifth time that Polly has carried the ball this season. And we're into the seventh game of the 1990 campaign. Keen to try to kick the extra point, and he drills it. So the California Golden Bears taking their lead to 17 points again. Well, the team swapped field goals at the end of the second period to bring the score to 27-10 California at the break. Join us in a minute for the second half. Well, California extended their lead to 30 points to 10 at the start of the third quarter with this 31-yard field goal and looks set to end that 20-year streak of Bruin victories in the series. 
With eight and a half minutes left in the quarter, however, it's a first and ten Bruins on their own 26. Wills is to the left of Maddox, Brian Brown to the right. Pass is complete, Scott Miller, and he's dropped in his tracks. Good defensive play by the right cornerback, Dave Wilson. He's from the Los Angeles area, went to Reseda High School. In fact, Wilson was the Los Angeles City Defensive Player of the Year in 1987. Scott Miller leaves, replaced by Michael Moore. UCLA band is here today, the Song Girls. And the California Golden Bears have a 30 to 10 lead over UCLA midway through the third quarter. Maddox rifles this right on target to Sean LaChapelle. And LaChapelle is dropped in his tracks by the strong safety, Ron English. 13 yards and a first down, and that's probably the best pass that Maddox has thrown the whole game. Yeah, UCLA's finding it to be a little bit easier moving the ball through the air. Cal's defensive secondary really isn't rated that high. Their running defense is quite a bit better. Don't you suppose the defense is slacking off a little bit, saying, hey, we'll give you the five, six-yard pass, but we're not going to give you the touchdown Yes. with a 30-10 to 10 lead. Maddox steps up. He's got a path. He's going to run. And he runs right into Scott Spaulding, and then is dropped by John Belli, the nose guard of the California Bears. It appeared that had Maddox wanted to take off to a path to his left side, he could have picked up maybe 10, 12 yards. Yeah, or he actually could have dumped the ball off to one of the backs. I know that. I'm going to take a look at Belli there. Belli. John Belli out of Fresno, California, was a walk on when he came here to Cal four years ago. California 30, UCLA 10. Again from the shotgun formation. Lanzino at center. Maddox will air it out if he can. He's going to run. And Maddox dives in around the 41-yard line of Cal. That'll be enough for a UCLA first down. 11 yards on the scramble by redshirt freshman quarterback Tommy Maddox. Tackle was made by Eric Zomon. That's Greg's younger brother. Maddox once again Cal falling back into a zone defense and really nowhere to go with the ball does what he really should do and that's run ahead and get the first down La Chapelle wide right Scott Miller and uh, Michael Moore are wide to the left side and again the Bruins will operate out of the shotgun it's so far been working on this drive Maddox goes for Reggie knocked away from Sean Will. Sean Wills going for the ball along with Cal's Dave Wilson. Well, it's awfully tough to get this ball in against his own defense. Wills is running out to the flat and then as he comes to the sideline he turns it up the field and Wills actually makes a fine play. They're not allowing the ball to get intercepted. Reggie Moore comes to the right side. Sean Wills, Brian Brown. Flanking the man in the middle. And that is the quarterback, Tommy Maddox. Maddox rifles this pass to La Chapelle. And La Chapelle's got another first down for UCLA around the Cal 30. Tackle was made by the true freshman for the Bears, Eric Zummel. 11 yards on the throw. Miller to La Chapelle. You know, in his own quiet way, La Chapelle has really come to the fore in the last four or five games. He really has. He's really played well and much more consistent. California 30, UCLA 10. You know something? The Bruins are not out of this game yet. To Scott Miller. Can he catch up with it? No. Dave Wilson matching Miller stride for stride. Well, that time, Cal gambling again, bringing people. They're blitzing, leaving UCLA in a man-to-man -man defense with Reggie Moore and Scott Miller. And Maddox trying to get the ball to Miller, just out of his reach and out of bounds. So it'll be second and ten. And again, the Bruins will operate out of their passing formation. The ball is at the California 31. It's California 30 and UCLA 10. Five and a half minutes still to be played in the third quarter. I'm Mike Walden along with Tom Ramsey. The pass right on target to La Chapelle. La Chapelle struggles to get to the six-yard line. 
Dave Wilson had a hold of one foot and finally pulled him down. Just a great, just a great play by Maddox this time. A gain of 25. Maddox going to once again elude defenders, step up in the pocket and rifle a ball to LaChapelle, who gets up the field, makes a nice move there, almost gets free for a touchdown. So it'll be first and goal to go. UCLA, the ball at the California six. Kevin Smith up in front of Brian Brown. Corwin Anthony is the tight end. The pitch to Brian Brown. Makes his cut at the five. Touchdown, Brian Brown, UCLA. And credit the tight end, Randy Austin, with a key block as Brown motored around the right side. Big block, very big block by Randy Austin. You're going to see a six-yard run by Brian Brown picking up some key blocks. Kevin Smith with a key block as well. And Brown really just turns on the Jets right there, uses his speed to the corner of the end zone. An awfully big drive for UCLA. The holder will be the quarterback, Tommy Maddox. And the kicker, Brad D'Aloiso, a senior from San Diego. Making the snap will be Derek Stevens. D'Aloiso adds the extra point. 13 here at the start of the fourth. Second and nine for the California Bears. Russell White, look at him go. Russell White, what an effort. It took outside linebacker Roman Pfeiffer to bring him down. First and goal to go for the California Bears at the UCLA 5. Well, Russell White patterns his style of play after one of the great ones, Walter Payton. And right here, you see him just keep his legs going. Second and third effort, great run by Russell White. And also a great effort by that Cal offensive line, especially Ernie Rogers and James Richards. First and goal for California. The Bears could put it away right here. Let's see. Here's Russell White trying to get to the outside. Touchdown! Russell White. It's been some time since I've been coming up here to Berkeley to hear the crowd make more noise than the cannon. Now, I've never heard the cannon go off quite so many times myself, but Russell White taking the handoff from Poloski, getting some great blocking once again up front, scoots in for the touchdown. It appeared that Anwat Twebby had a shot at him. Right about there. And Anwat Twebby is down at the five-yard line. Russell White. Presby High School, six feet tall, 200 pounds, a 20-year-old sophomore. And that for Russell White, his eighth touchdown this season. A lot of people want to compare him to his uncle, Charlie White, formerly of USC, the Trojans Heisman Trophy winner. I think that Russell definitely has more speed than Charlie, and he's a little bit larger than Charlie. The Bears going for the two-point conversion. The pass is caught. Brian Trague. And every number is coming up in favor of the California Bears. The Bears can do no wrong here today at Strawberry Canyon. Well, Pulaski just throws the ball to Brian Treggs, who really comes out of what you would call a pick play. Nice play by Cal. So UCLA faced with an almost unassailable Cal lead, but they pull back seven points on this two-yard run and a kick by Daloizo. Now with just nine minutes left in the game, it's first and ten Bruins on the Cal 45. First down for UCLA at the Cal 45. The Bruins are not out of this game yet even though UCLA trails 38 to 24. And we have over eight minutes to play, 8-10 to be exact. Tommy Maddox steps up, and now he's gonna go down. Joel Dixon makes his fourth quarterback sack of the season and his 18th career quarterback sack. Well, Dixon just comes barraging on in, and. Cal only rushing three three players on that particular play, but still making the sack. Second and 12, UCLA. The ball now back to the Cal 47. 
from the shotgun. Maddox steps up and fires this pass, and it is caught. Michael Moore down to the 29 of the California Bears. And I'll tell you one thing, Maddox really had some juice on that pass. Well, he really did. He had his feet set that time and really whistled one into Michael Moore. Cal's only rushing three this time, dropping eight in pass coverage. And Maddox really coming through that time, much like a baseball player throwing to Michael Moore. Moore was tackled by Cornell Collier. Bruins with the first down at the 29 of Cal. Maddox rifles this behind Moore, who had made his cut, and he tried to reach out with his left hand to gather it in. Ray Sanders playing back at free safety for Cal. Sanders didn't start the game today because of an injury, but he's in there now. Brian Adams comes in as a wide receiver for UCLA. It'll be Reggie Moore, Brian Adams, and Michael Moore, the wide receivers. Cal fans having a few anxious moments right now. 7-18 to play. California leading by 14, 38-24. Maddox steps up, got a chance to run, lays it off to Adams, and he can't hold on. Pass was thrown a little bit behind the true freshman. And that will mean third down for UCLA, 10 yards to go. Ball is at the 29 of the California Bears. Barry Donahue conferring on the sidelines. That's what UCLA has done in third down conversions. Big play right here for the Bruins, no doubt about it, with 7-10 to go. From the shotgun, Tommy Maddox steps up. Fires the pass. It's caught by Reggie Moore at the five. Moore is twisted, fumbles the ball into the end zone, and the Bruins have a touchdown. Scott Miller makes the recovery. Touchdown, UCLA. The alert, Scott Miller. He will never get an easier touchdown. That's right. Well, it wasn't pretty, but this time UCLA gets the bounce of the ball. Maddox... Reggie Moore really an outlet receiver that time streaking across the middle of the field. I'm not sure. I believe Wilson was the one that ripped the ball out. Miller right there to fall in it for touchdown. Here's the extra point attempt by Daloiso. Hey, we've got ourselves a ball game here in Strawberry Canyon. So now just seven points in the game. Well, we pick up Cal's next drive with a third and three on their own 29 yard line. 536 left in the game. Third down and three. Pulaski throws the pass is caught by Craigs, and Craigs gets up to about the 35-yard line. First down for California. Damian Lyons made the tackle. But what a big third down play for Cal. Very big third down play. They're going to go with something that they've done all game, and that's Pulaski to Treggs. Just a little quick turnaround hitch. Gets enough for the first down. California 38, UCLA 31 as the Bears try to end 19 years of frustration at the hands of UCLA. It is Anthony Wallace. The Bruins say that Wallace fumble. Indeed, indeed. Pfeiffer makes the recovery. Oh, my, what a change of events. Roman Pfeiffer comes up with that recovery. And the Bruins will have a first down at the Cal 37. Well, it's just a little misdirection to Wallace, and Pfeiffer just rips the ball from Wallace. Pfeiffer, Johnny on the spot, really an impact player for the Bruins, comes, comes away with the biggest play of the day so far. And Roman Pfeiffer has missed the last couple of games because of an injury. That's the first turnover in the game today. UCLA with a first and 10 at the California 37. The Bruins need seven points to tie and eight to go out in front. Five minutes left in the game. Tommy Maddox pass, no good. Scott Miller was down and out towards the sidelines trying to catch up, but he couldn't do it. Remember that UCLA-Stanford game, the second game of the year? The Bruins won it in the last second. 32 to 31. Another nail biter here at Strawberry Canyon in Berkeley. 
right Looking there. over the shoulder of Stacy Argo. Second down and 10. Sean Wills and Brian Brown flanking the quarterback, Tommy Maddox. Maddox rifles this. The pass is made and grabbed by Reggie Moore. First down, UCLA at the California 17-yard line. Michael Davis made the tackle. 20 yards from Maddox to Reggie Moore. Well, when you need a big play, go to your most experienced receiver right there, Reggie Moore, jumping, making a great catch right there. Maddox delivering the ball on time. Moore with a great reception ahead for the first down. And did Maddox have some juice on that throw? Four and a half minutes left, first and 10 for UCLA. The ball is at the California 18. Maddox will load it up again under a heavy rush. Off to Sean LaChapelle. Tackled in his tracks at the 14. They will mark his forward progress at the California 14-yard line. So that was a pickup of about three. Right here, LaChapelle La in the slot to the left side. Maddox once again getting pressure, being blitzed once again. Delivers the ball to LaChapelle. Hardy right there to make the tackle. Scott Miller goes wide to the right side. Michael Moore is in the slot to the right. Again, out of the shotgun. Second and six. UCLA with the ball at the Cal 14. Tommy Maddox looking for Reggie Moore. He's going to be sacked. Loses the ball. Cal has it. seen this much enthusiasm on the Cal Berkeley campus in years, maybe decades. Cal once again coming with the blitz, putting a lot of heat on Maddox. It's Michael Davis that made the hit. Michael Davis jarring the ball away from Tommy Maddox. And Joel Dixon. Dixon right there to fall on top of the ball. UCLA fumbling the ball and with it their last chance of a win. California took the ball with 3.43 left and ran out the clock for an eight-point victory and a Gatorade shaft for head coach Bruce Snyder. After 19 years of frustration at the hands of UCLA, it is over. The Bears are finally going to beat UCLA in football for the first time in since 1971 and the first time here in Berkeley since 1968. So, with that game now settled, let's check out the highlights of Arizona at the USC Trojans. At the season start, Arizona's Wildcats shone like their famous sunshine. Somehow, even in the last minute, they found a way to win. They were ranked among the nation's best. A week ago, disaster at Parker Stadium, Corvallis. Oregon State stunned Arizona by two touchdowns. The loss sent them packing to Tucson with a sense of desperation, hoping to regain the magic. A different scene on the farm at Stanford. USC's passing game rediscovered the Midas touch. Todd Marinovich had the finest day of his career. And football became fun again for the Big Redhead. So as the second half of the conference season starts, neither team can afford a loss. The loser can forget that shot at the Roses. It's USC hosting the Wildcats of Arizona next. Well, a crucial game for both squads. Arizona won the toss and kicked off to the Trojans, a decision they began to regret as USC quickly moved upfield towards the Wildcat end zone. The fullback, Lockwood has got the first down at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, 5, touchdown USC. 30 yards, and Lockwood puts it in the end zone, and the Trojans go 84 yards for the opening drive, and it's four. For Scott Lockwood, Mike, that's his second touchdown of the year. In the key guy, 75, that's Tucker, who's going to blow his man out. Lockwood shows you he's tough, but now he's going to show you his speed. He's going to just pick it up, and you're going to notice he's not even worried. He's just going to glide in. He's a 9'6 man. He looks very quick. A kick from Rodriguez, and the Trojans had seven points on the board. Well, with both teams' defenses taking control of the first quarter, it wasn't until USC got the ball at the start of the second that any further points were scored. The Wildcats holding the Trojans to this 48-yard field goal to make it 10-0. Three plays later, though, and Arizona had a first and 10 on the Trojan 48. Malaulu, play action, back to throw. The left-hander turns it loose downfield. He's got a man. That's Bates. Bates is at the five. Touchdown, Arizona. 
Wildcats are right back in this one. So, just three points between the two teams after, after this cost and conversion. And after a USC failed to move the ball on their next drive, it's the Wildcats in possession again with a third and four on their own 17-yard line. Malahulu, rolling to throw, gets away, throws it upfield, intercepted! Into the end zone, Holmes for the touchdown, 24 yards! Another kick from Rodriguez, and the Trojans went into halftime 10 points ahead. On the first drive of the third quarter, though, the Wildcat defensive pressure left USC with a fourth and seven on their own four-yard line. Back line of the end zone, they come with a pretty good rush. He hits a high hanger. Lewis backs up, 49-yard line, 45, 40, look out, 20. He is going to be dropped at the six-yard line. What a return, about 43 yards. One play later, and it's second and goal, Arizona. Beal pitching, trying to turn the corner, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. McGill. Five-yard run. And the Wildcats, thanks to a great punt return by Lewis, are right back in it. A conversion from Coston, and the Wildcats are within three points of USC. Now, with just one minute left in the quarter, the Wildcats have a second and ten on the Trojan 19-yard line. Option, here comes Veal. Cuts back, ten, five, touchdown Arizona. Nineteen yards, and the Wildcats go on top. So, a four-point Wildcat lead with the conversion, and the Arizona fight back wasn't over yet. At the start of the fourth, they gained 28 yards on this fumble Ruski play. The quarterback placing the ball on the ground to be picked up and carried by Warren, an offensive guard. Two plays later, and the Wildcats had found the end zone on this one-yard keeper. The kick leaving USC down by 11 points with 13 minutes of game time left. The Trojans used up four of these minutes to move to the Arizona 8, but I could only come away with this 25-yard field goal, making it 28 points to 20. So Arizona just eight points clear now, and when a personal foul on their next possession left them on a second and 21, it was up to the Trojans' defense to shut down the Wildcat drive. Field again, backing up to throw, throws it downfield, pass is caught. Vaughn at the 30, the 29. Makes the stop 32 yards. 22-yard run by Lamont Lovett on the next play, and it was first and goal at the Trojan seven. Get the Talk about a couple of big plays. Here's Beal again. That's back. Touchdown. Beal gets his third. Well, it's his third of the game and his ninth of the year with 7:31. They go. 65 yards in four plays. A 15-point Wildcat lead after the conversion, leaving the Trojans needing two touchdowns and a field goal for the win, with just five minutes left in the game. Marinovic was quick to move USC upfield for this 21-yard touchdown strike. Now a two-point conversion would move the Trojans to within seven of Arizona. Going for two points. The silenced USC sideline watching the play broken up and with it their last hope of even a tie. Arizona running out the clock to come out 35-26 winners in a major upset victory. Well that leaves the top five in the Pac-10 looking like this. Washington dominate with only the three and one Golden Bears looking able to mount a serious challenge. Next week we'll see both USC and UCLA try to come back from this week's defeats as the Trojans visit Arizona State and UCLA play host to unpredictable Oregon State. I hope you can join us then. Red 45. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Touchdown. 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 Touchdown.